Microphone check one two. What is this? The JBP boys bike the business. Welcome to episode four oh eight. Hundu. Welcome to episode four oh eight of the Joe Budden podcast. I'm your humble, gracious, grateful, and highly favored host, Joe Budden, here with a few of my nearest and dearest. My good brother Maul is here, huh? What's up, man? Feeling good, man. How about yourself? I'm good, man. Good. I like the earth tones. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. I see you're continuing your streak as the best dressed potter in the game. Ooh. You came for him today, though. No, you did. <sighs> A challenger has, has walked in. <laughs> it's a timely two three pointers he makes each game. Each game he gets a timely bucket in here. We'll get to my we'll get to my ensemble. Yeah. Wanna do a breakdown? Let's wardrobe finish, breakdown? Let's finish with Maul, Mr. <laughs> Uniformity. Okay? <laughs> now. I'm going to pull your shirt like no. Jan straps. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know what it's about. Keep it on me. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's keep it on me. Bring it in. Probably going to get the whole Jan Sports strap treatment from his shirt. But why we can't just joke <laughs> on me? Pull your shit at the bus stop. But why we can't do that after I joke on Maul? Okay, joke on me. Come on, let's go. There we go. So come on, Pars, give me one. All right, now, now why? Cargo's on the knees is a little odd. Okay. Nah, you can put things in there. Okay, yeah, see? I wish cargo pants were cool. Yeah. Now. I appreciate you trying to bring them back. Thank you. Man. This okay. is what's confusing to me. And in a minute, we will begin. This is what's confusing to me. As someone who supports financial literacy such as yourself, mm -hmm. as someone who uh, who supports uh, creative, uh, creative freedom, mm -hmm. And as someone as well dressed as you are, mm -hmm. why are you so against starting a YouTube page to try on outfits? Oh, that'd be a good show. Just try Ball on tries on outfits. Now I, am, I can grant you the opportunity. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Though. I appreciate that. I'm not trying on clothes for a show. But, but Every, everything ain't content. But nah, why that's not? That's a good show. Niggas don't want to see me trying on clothes. Yes, they do. Yeah. Yeah. They do not. I nah, guarantee the you they're watch. asking for it. Yeah. I guarantee you they want to see me trying on clothes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Nobody and you can, and you can finally you're come not, out the closet. You're not going to start nude. T. Roy always take it there. You're not going to start <laughs> nude. No, 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 no. I know. But uh, maybe like tr like trying on going shopping, like people want to see that. Yeah, like shit, yeah. you went out in Compton, how you pe piecing it together. You know how like when dudes used to lay their fits on the bed? Yeah. Yeah, that's the next step from that. Yeah, malls fits on the bed. That's yeah. a good Malls fits on the bed. Yeah. Malls lay. Why are you so against that? I'm not against it. That was the first time that's right, well, gonna talk. to me. I'm going to call uh -huh. Yeah, we could do that. <laughs> I don't think I don't think it's gonna stick, but okay. Yeah, it's probably not gonna. <laughs> yeah, nah. It's probably not gonna Nobody go. Nobody would have seen well. a nigga trying on clothes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about some, that. Some, something tells me Hop's gonna have some questions. Yeah. <laughs> nah, but you gotta add trying on clothes. You gotta add some of your flavor in there, though. Yeah, but that's like with your slang. Mm. No, I don't know. Oh, about that's what that, sell it. The slang. Come on, man. More than master class. Cool. Don't do that. Yeah. Parks, what's going on with I'm you, man? Chilling, man. Chilling. Apartment shopping. How's it going? Mm. I think we got one. There we Flex go. On hey, no, there we go. Finally, let's get to yes, yes. The other one, real, real, real life through. shit. No, the one I think I showed you last week. Yeah, yeah that one. That's a go. Yeah. Okay, that's a go. That's a good spot. That's a great spot. It's a really good spot. The dope one after the dope one. Yeah, got it. Just yeah, the Scarface spot that disappeared, but I found a great one. That's okay, okay. as they yeah. tend to do. Yeah. yeah. Why he didn't know that that dope ass a place was going to disappear? I have no idea. No, I I'm still confused by I, that. I hit them up immediately, but. Park said, gone. yeah, I hit him the next day. And I no, think I they, they, must, they must have took it off because I didn't see it anymore. I think, I yeah, right. No, I that, hit That's it. not how that goes. As soon as it, I saw it. Yeah. Well, uh -huh. good. So you're moving forward? I am moving forward. Damn, double entendre. Come on, Joe. Come back. Come can, back. Can, come back. Can we stay Come here? back. One more with Empire. <laughs> We're going to tear it down, so I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> you, you unlaced your dicky suit? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man. Listen, he got the ball. He going. He going. Rory's so happy to be back he, around he us. Go ahead, get your shit off. He thinks no, it's a good Go ahead, get your shit off. All right, Rory's here. Hey. <laughs> hey. Cash app. 
<laughs> yeah, no, you stop jumping the gun. Erickson is here. Shout out to Erad. Baisley is here. Corey is here. Uh, Savon the Don is here. And Alex the Great is here. How is everybody feeling as a whole? Good, man. Good, man. good, good. Good, good. good weekend. 2021 seven, is still great? Yeah, man. I did the seven-day cleanse. It's finally over. Okay. Okay. Yeah, man, I was did you feel clean? What were you cleansing? Yeah. My body. How was that clonic? His, his insides. I didn't get a clonic yet. I'm going to get one soon, though. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to get one soon. But Has anybody ever important. got a clonic in the room? I haven't. No, I haven't. not yet. I'm but, getting one, though. Judge, I'll give it a shot. Judge, judging by my fiber, I should. <laughs> yeah, you might. Yeah. Yeah. I want to get some water up there. Killers, kill, <laughs> killers have suggested one to me. Killers. It's killers. always funny what the killers suggest. Yeah, you worry about your health. Like nigga, nah, you go clean out your butt. Like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, kill hey, ten people. Hey, red meat's bad for you, sir. Yeah, yeah, like I mean, all right, I ain't yeah, want to tell you no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know what you did. Some of 04, sir. Yeah, you know that's hilarious. It's almost time for I haven't not, no clonic for me. And Rory just reminded me the other week that it's almost time for that prostate uh that yeah, prostate buddy, yeah, test yeah, yeah, for sure. You gotta get mm-hmm. finger banged in the name of science sometimes, you know? Yeah, man. But get a clonic first. But for some reason, when I was younger, like when I turned 31, them explaining that prostate prostate process to me, they made it sound like the worst thing in the world. Today, when you're 40, it's like, man, do what you gotta do back there. <laughs> yeah. I hear you. And I mean, some are gentle. You just have to find your right guy. Man, go ahead and swear your little finger around. Some, some of them skinny fingers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Take them to dinner. Yeah. You know, some, some of them have a little TLC. Yeah. With, Which your, what? with your booty. It's bad? Oh, you said it's not bad. Oh, it is bad. Real bad? Now nah, you found someone with I'm big bad. hands, man. <laughs> huh? I'm used to it at this Wait, point. Wait, what'd you say? <laughs> well, how many you got to go do? It depends on if he likes you or not. <laughs> <laughs> or, or if you do. Wait, you got to keep going and get a prostate test? <laughs> Doc, I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, you yeah, got to yeah, check yeah, it again. Yeah. It depends on if you like him or not. You know what I'm saying? You keep going back. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if you've had the real corona test, it's kind of the same thing, just in a different area. <laughs> Nose and ass is very different. Very different. Nose very and ass different. is very different. Yeah. <laughs> is he cute? <laughs> <laughs> is he gentle? Uh, come on, man. Stop playing he with has me. He steady hands. I can, I can <laughs> recommend have candles in the room? Yo, you ever go with your girl to the gyno? No. Ever in life? No, Wait, shut the fuck up. No, I haven't. Shut up. I haven't. Yo, I never even came up in my entire life. <laughs> Yo, how did I get talked into all this bullshit? You went to the guy with your girl? Uh, numerous times. Did you watch the, everything say, happen? I was trying to be a What's fucking that? ride or die. You <laughs> <laughs> help strap her in? <laughs> what type of man is you just going to let another dude look at your girl's box like that? Uh, While you right there, uh-huh. pussy. Oh, you were standing over his shoulder like, yeah, doc, that's me right there. <laughs> That you was giving him like yeah. Nah. One one day this podcast will grow up. <laughs> one day I promise you. One day I'm telling you it's gonna happen one day. Why? Well, um, well now she can come with you to get your booty fingered. That's yeah. true. I want to shout out to yeah. I want to shout out to reciprocity. Brief pause between people that pay us and our content. <laughs> <laughs> You can pay your doctor with cash See, app. I just said, That's true. I just said, don't worry. <laughs> just put the finger emoji in the description. Yeah. <laughs> just so you remember what it is for your records. Yo, what's it called when you get, um, oh, PTO. You want PTO? Yeah. Kinda. <laughs> just head out. <laughs> just go I, I, gotta, I gotta talk to Hop. <laughs> Everybody got told up. Um, what am I saying? Uh, shout out to uh, the app that pow- uh, empowers us, tolerates us, sponsors us, puts up with us. Greatest app in the world, uh, Cash App. We appreciate you and thank you. And with that said, everybody's feeling good, feeling great. Where do you gentlemen want to begin? Tell me the list. Don't start me off morbid. Is morbid talk? There's morbidity? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But don't find any. Yeah, no. I'm not looking for it's it. good vibes out there. High vibrations. Yeah. Do y'all want to start with just some lighthearted fun? Another list has been published for some reason. Uh, Is that what we want to start Back to listen to We don't have to. Come on, give I me mean, something else. I don't want to talk about that. All right, we don't have to start here. I'm tired. I'm tired of give lists. Me, give, give me a start. I hate your starts, though. No morbidity. No, no, no. Not, nothing morbid. Or politics. Nah, man. My, my guy's going tomorrow. It's, you know, it's not until, It's not fun anymore. You got the end of the road queued up in there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look at the top. It's always parks. It's always parks. Let's, oh, let's start it's here. Let's parks. start with this. All right. It's fine. It's, what do we think? It's finally uh, happening? This is like our sixth analysis. <laughs> <This> is, <laughs> what do you, you think, man? You notice they announced it 48 okay. hours before, so Ashanti had no time to run. <laughs> All right. So Ashanti and Keisha Cole is scheduled for tomorrow. Yes. When Versus is promoting this on Instagram, they're, they're saying things like the date, the final date is set. Uh-huh. They're saying things like, it's not real. They say it's not real until the promo drops. And then the promo drops. I'm like, oh, it's real now. Mm. Of, of um, just old 
videos of theirs together. <laughs> back to back. <laughs> that's that's what made it official? Yeah. Well, now it is official, and tomorrow night, Keisha Cole uh, and Ashanti will go at it head to head. I wasn't clear. Oh, they're doing it separately. They said that, right? Yeah, no, they're not in the same room. Damn. Yeah. It's all right. I wonder if they found a way to make the split screen better. That's that's my question. Well, they said the audio, like well, they said that this is yeah. still a, still available on Apple TV. So, okay. so I'm assuming that the split screen will be a little better. Okay. Yeah. They got uh, the good cameras. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll um So let's let me ask the generic question. Do you guys still care? I do. Yeah, of course. Yeah, definitely. I'm not doing anything else on yeah, Thursday I night. Think, uh, hopefully they, they they play with the uh the whole This is literally a sticky note of Rem saying, can you play Ashanti for us, please, from Saturday night? So I have no choice but to care because Rem cares. Okay. So y'all are rooting for Keisha Cole? We're, I, I think we're Ashanti people. Oh, okay. Right. I think. Look, look, how, look how men in, in, uh, in, yeah, in yeah, relationship yeah. got to talk. I think we're Ashanti yeah. people. Yeah. I like, you know, I like you know they can't likes. have an opinion of yeah, their no, own. You, no, you can't, I can't. You can't go for not, not with certain things. No, no, no. You don't miss those? Opinions of my own? Yeah. Well, I have opinions on certain things, but Ashanti just, versus Keisha Cole, that, oh. that, no. Yeah, you just let that go. Pick your battles, man. Yeah. Pick your battles. Got it, got it. Uh, what what can we expect? What can we expect from this? Well, let's not gloss even over the excitement in which that. we spoke on uh, spoke on this battle the first time and where we are now. It's dwindled a bit, but naturally so when you reschedule this many times. Well, I wanted to talk to you two. With the amount of time that you have, this is definitely a watch with a woman type of versus. Yeah, you guys mm. have only a few hours to schedule a date mm. and, and confirm a young woman. Oh yeah. Are you guys a little nervous? No. <laughs> not at all I know you had it like that My No bad. I'm not Never nervous Drop of a dime she coming Yeah I mean you know I have, I have a lot of female friends That are just come through and chill Watch uh, Shanti and Keisha Can, can we come too And hang no. out with your female friends No I, just, I don't like guys around me okay. When I'm listening to R&B gotcha. That's reasonable Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna f- watch this alone Rory And while you're right I shouldn't uh, I somehow have mismanaged The timing this year And I failed the local Bay Olympics There, there is no one to invite over to enjoy this with oh, okay. as is the same with some of the amazing and phenomenal shows and movies that have come out what about maybe recently. taking taking a risk and just I'm asking a stranger watching them alone mm. and invite a stranger to my home yeah yeah live a little i'm not tamia <laughs> i'm joe <laughs> pussy <laughs> tamia came out with that jam back i, in the I day. understood we got it. We know <laughs> I, I got the joke we know you <laughs> We got it. I was trying to do you a favor. Um, yeah, but this would be fly if you could watch this with somebody. I see a lot of women having like uh, watch parties for this, though. Like yeah. Women seem to be getting together and doing their own thing for this one. And we ain't been invited to none, right? No, no, no. Why do you think that is? Uh, probably we need to sit this one out. We're not them dudes no more? No. Nah. Sit this one out. Let the ladies have this one. When, when does a guy figure that out? That is not... Is he the uh, last to know? 37. That he's just not that dude no more? Mm, you, you're the last to uh, accept it. You're the first to know, actually. Like you know it. You know when it's over for you, but you just don't accept it. I be seeing some of the other dudes out here, and I'm like, I get it. Other dudes as far <laughs> I'm not as good as him. Times have changed. Like, I don't even know what haircut this is niggas is wearing. I don't know. That wasn't on the little board back in the day. <laughs> when, 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 <laughs> you go to the bar? These little shits, like when the Pat Mahomes, Pat, Pat Mahomes commercial come on, and everybody's trying to get the Pat Mahomes haircut, I'm like, see? Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't have thought of that. Just sit down, Joe. Yeah. I don't know. I think maybe you could pull off the just the two braids right here and then the fade. I could see you with that. Not gonna try it. <laughs> yeah. not, I can see you with that too, right? Not gonna no, give no, not, listen, not gonna give it a go. I could I could appropriate the culture. <laughs> I don't even remember what we were talking about. Keisha Cole and Ashanti. Oh, Great. I don't yeah, listen, man. When it comes on, it comes on. Wait, what is it to say? Yeah. What is it to say? Yeah. Nothing to say. Thursday night. You still got Ashanti, right? Uh yeah, I'll take Ashanti. And you still don't Attribute any of this to her running, right? No, no, no. I don't think she was running. You know, she had COVID, family had COVID, and then they had to shut down the in studio together thing because of the rising cases in COVID. It's just the times we're in, man. Do we need to? Do we need to? Because uh, it's been so long. Do we need to redo our forecast, our predict, our score predictions? Um, I'll go. I'll go eleven nine, Ashanti. I'm gonna go eleven nine, Keisha Cole. Same. Twelve eight, Ashanti. If Rem's okay with that. <laughs> Matter of fact, <laughs> you didn't check with Rem yet. <laughs> Run upstairs and confirm. <laughs> Text her and get her score right now. Yeah. I do think that uh, them not being together is an advantage for Ashanti. Because mm. when 
they would have been together and Keisha started singing, singing on some of those ballads. Pressure? I think, I think it would have been a little tough for Ashanti to then just come in and be like, here's a hook from this Ja record. So I think them being separate is going to look a little different. Okay. The thing, one of my favorite things about verses, and we won't stay on this too long, is I like to see artists be face to face with certain records. So though I'm rooting for Ashanti, I wanted to see her have to face rain, rain on me, in person. Okay. It's Ooh, different. I was gonna say Ashanti made rain. Rain on me. Is That's Keisha, what I'm saying. It's Ashanti. I wanted to cool. see. I'm, I'm saying I wanted to see Keisha have to face that. Okay. That's what I meant to say. Gotcha. Okay. There's certain Keisha records that I wanted to see Ashanti have to be faced with, face to face. Mm. So yeah, the dual the dual screen shit is cool, but I would have liked them to still be in person. But safety first, and hopefully they figured out a way to make it uh, flow well with the split screen yeah. thing, where they can hear each other and see each other, mm-hmm. and, timing, all that type yeah. of shit. I mean, either way, there's not gonna be bad record played. True, it's gonna be a fun night. True, is it a kickback kind of night? I think so. It's a red I think line. This, I think this is the kickback. It's R and B. Yeah. It's R and B, and it's two thousands R and B. That's the even more kickback. Yeah. Type shit. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. Uh, so on the heels of that battle being announced, there are rumblings of Travis Scott versus Future in a versus that. matchup. Yeah. And this is coming from Timberland's manager, allegedly. I haven't spoken to him, but this sounds exciting. If, yeah. it, if it were to happen, I have future. I'll keep my commentary brief. And that's that. But boy, would that be an event. Of yeah. course. That's, 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 the, uh, that's one I hope that they're able to pull off in person. That's what I appreciated about Jeezy and Gucci's verses, is that the after effects of those two gentlemen doing it would be other dudes that I feel like would normally scoff at it mm-hmm. to say I'll do it. Like mm-hmm. Travis Scott and Future are the two gentlemen I just wouldn't see rushing. jumping for joy and rushing to do verses. Yeah, but now it yeah, has. Travis is a fairly new artist in in, in terms of verses. Travis well, that's, is that's why gone. That's why I don't think this is a good matchup. He's gone. He's gone. He's yeah. out of here. Oh, he's no, out of here. No, he's a superstar. But I'm just saying, like, out of here. As far as the verses that we've got, yeah, he's <laughs> out of here. Don't you like I'm when you see people get out of here that were like right here with us? Yeah, doesn't that feel nice? Yeah, it's good to see. Like when you look at certain things that their team did and and decisions they made to really push them through. It well, especially it yeah. actual talented musically artists too. Yeah. Like that certain decisions lot. that you know other people might not make if put in that same position. Like mm-hmm. when Travis dumped all his all his show money back into the show mm-hmm. and just ran around for a whole year not with a roller in, in the red. Mm-hmm. But it looked like the illest thing you ever saw in your life on stage. Yeah. I want to say that that wasn't that before the Kanye shit. No, Kanye shit. no, no. I don't think so. No, Kanye had the, the, the elaborate floating stage and shit first. That was first. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, he maybe got that sauce from him. Why not? They're they're. That's what it's about, though. You, you gotta commend people see for artists doing do stuff things like that. And you 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 like okay. I'm I don't okay. care where you got it from. Yeah, yeah. that's dope. I like that because everybody ain't dumping their show money into their show. True. No, no, no. People Especially not, so when you, when you sit at home and wonder why gentlemen got that far. They did something. Yeah. They did something different. They did something adverse. They did something that wasn't so predictable. And niggas it, it niggas don't talent. just ride the same blueprint to success. No, no, no. And yeah. that's what's so beautiful about hip hop. Real, real talent. When people recognize real talent, it, it, it stands out. And he's uh, an artist. I agree with all of you. But with that said, do you guys think this is a fair matchup? Yeah. I don't care if it's fair. fair it's dope. What do you mean by fair? It's dope. It's a vibe. It should happen. I, I'm with you as a vibe because I love both of them. And you know Atlanta get I hyped just, when I one of theirs is in there. Future <laughs> has more. It's been around oh, longer. Absolutely. So? Yeah, it's been around just, longer. I, don't, I just don't think it's a But Travis has of, a lot of, of very big records. Yeah. So. He has features that have worked there. I just think Future is a, a different monster well, in well, a versus battle. Well, what you said off mic uh, was that you don't think Sicko Mode ever beats March Madness, right? I didn't say ever. I just, I think... Their, oh, you took a word biggest, out. All right. Their biggest records, I still think Future even wins when you go to their biggest records. Yeah. Because I think Future in the beginning is killing Travis with those early records. And then I killing. think when you get to the bigger ones, yeah, I think March Madness versus Sicko Mode, I don't care which is the bigger record on paper. Culturally, I think March Madness beats Sicko Mode. Mm. I don't know. That's a close one. Shut up. Either way, I'm, either way, I'm happy to yeah, hear both know. records. I don't yeah, know. me too. You might be right or wrong, but shut up. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> don't say culturally to me a day after Martin Luther King Day. 
<laughs> Yo, speak, speaking of, right? Of what? Of Martin Luther King Day. Okay. First of all, rest in peace, Martin Luther King. Of course. That's first and foremost. And happy, and happy birthday. birthday. Yeah. And happy birthday to Martin Luther King. And happy birthday to Mac Miller. That too. Mm-hmm. And happy rest birthday to Mac Miller. Mm-hmm. Rest in peace to Mac Miller. I, Saturday night, I had my baby, and I did one of those things. It's one of the moments where I wish y'all had kids so y'all could feel me. And I did one of those things where you drop your baby off just in case. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just in case you... Parents feel me, though. <laughs> Okay. They know. might not feel me. I don't know if the well, court system maybe not will. parents. Dads. Dads. <laughs> Dads is feeling me. I think there. there's some moms that probably And feel some you of you moms. Hussies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm joking. Wow, look at the double standard. <laughs> That's true. That's fucked up. Speak to it. Expound. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's unpack that. No. <laughs> um, let's see what pack. So I drop my baby off because uh, my mom really wanted to spend time with Lex, right? Mm-hmm. And I get home thinking it was about to be lit. And what I found was, you guessed it. It wasn't lit. <laughs> no, it's it was the lit. exact opposite of lit. Yes, Maul. It's a new lit. See, yeah. we run into two man weed. New lit. Clay out, Rory and Parks. Uh, Go ahead. Our, our definitions of lit have changed. That's true. Sometimes you just want to be alone. Sometimes you don't want no responsibility. Oh, Sometimes you just want quiet. Be alone. Sometimes you just want to walk naked to the fridge and grab something to drink. Yo, you speaking to my soul right now? Yeah, yeah that's man shit. Yo, we yeah. we soul ties. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You don't think so? Okay. Listen. So I get home and nothing is popping. Mm-hmm. It's super quiet. Mm-hmm. And I turn the LEDs on, take a page out of your book. I turn the TV on, search for some movies, and it was so quiet and beautiful and it smelled great. I was like, yo, this is the vibe. Absolutely. Yeah. No, no, no. I don't want company over. No, mm-hmm. get the text out of here. No. Alone is the vibe. You yeah. chose yourself as a vibe? And somehow, yes, Rory, get your shit off, white man, <laughs> a day after Martin Luther King Day. Get your shit off. What'd Two you days, say? technically. What you got to say? <laughs> and I turn on a Martin Luther King doc on a Saturday night with a nice meal and the LEDs, and that was the night. And nice. it was beautiful. Mm-hmm. But this specific doc, and that's, I guess that's my thing now, is just relearning about things that I thought I knew about. Mm-hmm. This specific doc in the little paragraph that tells you about it, because boy, do that hype me up. Mm-hmm. That's my thing, reading those and it's lit. A good trailer, yeah. Yeah, so I read that and the shit said, I thought they was lying, but they said it. They said, many years ago, the FBI had a tap on Martin Luther King. Now and for the first time ever, the taps are revealed. Mm-hmm. And I said, nigga, shut up. <laughs> Don't fucking try to sell me. I'll just, I got four ninety nine for you. I'll watch it. Right. So I turn it on, and lo and behold. They had the tapes. <laughs> they kept the files. Yeah. Let's revisit this Martin Luther King stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Please, break, break it down. How so, was it? How was it? It was really good. Yeah. The same way that Park spoke about the this Reagan doc. on Netflix? Doc. No, this oh. was like a, this is on Amazon Prime. Got you. I purchased it. Um, I purchased it on just the movie thing, mm-hmm. but it came on right, and I guess the part that some of the parts that is I just cool? forgot about what they were talking about how the you know the technology of course was different back then. Yeah. yeah. So for the Fed for the FBI to actually tap your phone, they had to go knock on your door as the phone guy, mm-hmm. talk to your family and say you uh, got to do some shit to your phone, mm-hmm. and that's how they tapped his phone. <laughs> yeah, that's fucked up. <laughs> Boy, I was so mad for Martin. Ah, yo, if you get me like that. Yeah. So they tapped his phone and the FBI, which somehow was still up and running to this day. <laughs> and, and tweeting happy Martin yeah, Luther King. Right. Day. Yeah, man. Some of, the, some of the slaps in the face to black people in America is crazy. Yeah. Like, that's what that doc said. Oh, yeah. So that was the other part. I mean, they were they had Martin under surveillance. Mm-hmm. And it just so happens it was like 900 of the FBI and the cops there when dude got the drop on him, he was assassinated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why we don't ever highlight that part when we talk about this stuff? Yes, he was assassinated. Yes, we have our beliefs as to why he was assassinated. But he was assassinated under surveillance? Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> they knew it was coming. He, he, he was... Y'all used, by y'all the used the media... To fucking say that Martin was having sex? That's how y'all vilified this great man? Mm. Yeah. It made me sick to my stomach. But boy, it was a great it was a great doc. And I felt so mature spending my Saturday night 
Do you on Martin Luther called? King is weekend, it, is watching this. This is it. This is the trailer right here. It's, actually, a, it's called it? MLK slash FBI. That straight, is the name of it. Straight to the point. They got like right <laughs> to the point. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this was nuts. This uh, what's homeboy's name? Hoover. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. Well, we know. We know. We so know. I don't have to say, but I mean, it showed a little more about him being tied to the president and the black man rising. Like, hold up, get the, get Duke. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why don't see? Never mind, man. Forget it. It was a really good watch. I'm That's watch all. It. Watch and it. and and for all the complaining I've done about there being nothing to watch, mm-hmm. let me tell y'all. Now it's mad stuff to watch. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, There's stuff mad watch. stuff to watch. I still haven't seen uh One Night in Paris. I haven't seen that either. And, uh, Amazon that? Prime, what? we talked about it last what, week. One Night, Gina, Mi- in Miami. One Night Miami. Oh, Miami, I'm sorry. Miami. Oh, yeah, One Night that was Miami. really good. You're so that. well traveled. I just still, get confused. That was really good. Well, I'd just be in Miami. <laughs> you you will too, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> I, had to, I had to cancel my trip. Oh, look, 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 look. You don't want to joke with Joe no more. You don't want to joke with Joe no more. Look, look you want to take a sip? I'm joking. Thirsty? <laughs> yeah. Let's joke. Take a little sip. Yeah. No, I don't want to joke with don't you. Fuck out of here. No, I'll be in Paris. How? Do you know why I don't go to Greece? Why? Because we do two ponds a week. Duh. Yeah. That is the only reason I do not go. Every yo, the algorithms keep showing me Mykonos. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, we can they show they got they got Wi Fi over there. They showed me uh Maul's bag. Hey Cor, what's that thing Maul used to invite girls over and lay on in the yard? Oh, the hammock. <laughs> they showed me a hammock in Mykonos. Yo, that's Maul what, with the happened. hammock. You remember? Yeah. I'm, don't, I won't expose it. I'm the hammock assassin. You was a fucking creep. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, for all man. the jokes you make about me bringing in, outside, inside, or whatever you say, the fire, or, you was tough. But, but a hammock belongs outside. I would you be, would bring the hammock in the living room. That's the difference. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Look difference. Look at the stars. Yeah, inside. Yeah, yeah. That's the difference. Yeah, but you got the hammock in a box. It's beautiful inside. No, he got the box. It, it can a box. You do. <laughs> don't, don't box it up. I'm restricting it to just yes, outside. Don't okay. box it up. Uh, a hammock is beautiful. Okay. I'd be um, too terrified. Your balance must be good to try to fuck on a hammock. I would be terrified. No, I didn't say it was I'm fucking fuck. in there, but nah, that's, that's where that's point. where he created fing, the vibe. Fing, finger banging. Yeah, and somehow he banging. always made it to his bedroom with the girls while I was had him under surveillance. <laughs> Jeff, like Jeff, I'm, Jeff, sitting, Jeff, I'm Jeff, sitting from the balcony. Jeff, Jeff, I'm sitting from the balcony. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, don't do that. You you old <laughs> I'm sitting on the balcony watching. It's like he disappeared. Nah, just go, you know, a little further investigation upstairs. He's like fucking what's the what's what's Shaq when he was a uh, genie or some shit? Shazam. No, Shazam, no, Shazam is funny. Shazam, Shazam is funny too. Uh, Shazam. But is let's Shazam? talk. But let's talk I about it was Shazam. Just Shaq. Shazam. <laughs> so you know what Shazam killed for me? Like there is certain gratification when you got the aux and you jamming. Oh yeah. And then somebody like, yo, yo, what's that? Mm. It's like, yo, I got you. <laughs> no, not only accident. Yo, sit, they, sit they right, Shazam, sit right there. Wait, let this, let the bridge rock out. I'm gonna give you the title. Nah, now they Shazam your shit on a low. I love Shazam. And I think that's wrong. Yeah, it is. And, and I think somebody needs to say it. You're stealing sauce. You should not be able to steal sauce without acknowledging that you're right. stealing sauce. Right. Yeah, That's you have to admit it. You got to complain. And it's fine. as a music lover, I really appreciate Shazam. Didn't Apple buy Shazam? Genius. Uh, probably. I wouldn't be, yeah, I wouldn't they be surprised. Shazam. Somebody bought Shazam. Okay. But years ago, I said somebody should buy Shazam. Somebody bought Shazam. But as a dude, as a music lover, when somebody's playing some fire, there's no cool way to like... Yo, what you playing? Pull your phone out and just sneak the Shazam. You don't want you don't want to, them to see you doing that. Right. That goes how, back to remember the old commercial you, when they was playing the record. And he's like, well, "Let me borrow." He's like, "No, my brother, you got to get your own." Get <laughs> <laughs> your own playlist. See, now Shazam, get rid of all of that. Nigga, just pull his phone out. Shazam your shit. Add right when, there. When, see, when well, I, I hit, I'll Shazam shit that I know just to remember. Yeah, oh, me too. oh, that's I the should, line you I give. I should them? add this. That's the line. That's oh, the line I, they give him. I, oh, I know this record. Y'all forgot about this one. <laughs> <laughs> I've really done that. Yo, this, this was in my playlist. <laughs> I already got. This. Forgot about that one. Yeah. Me, I just hit the button and get right in a small talk. I hit the shit. Shazam, how's your family doing? <laughs> Everything been cool? <laughs> Miss Greg. <laughs> uh, Greg's still gone? <laughs> He's still away? Yeah. Be peeking under his phone. There's no cool way to Shazam. That's all I'm no, saying. Nah, There's no Shazam. cool way to Nah, just, just admit. Yo, I don't know this. Yeah, just ask somebody. Like, yo, what, what's this? Shit, back in the day, so wait, wait, the, wait, wait, the wait, wait, wait. labels off the vinyl so you couldn't see what they were doing. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So do Listen, I would agree with you and Rory about, yeah, just fucking, what'd you say? Just say you don't know it. Just say you don't know it. That makes sense until you insert a woman. No, I think it's fine. now. Now, wait, wait, she... now, let a woman know that you didn't know that song, and you hit the Shazam, and you think that her music taste 
is fire. No, no, I dare no. See, you. I wouldn't. You I wouldn't will hit never the, hit the end of it. No, that's the difference. I wouldn't hit the. She's gonna tell all her friends. I wouldn't hit the Shazam on the record. A woman is playing. I would ask her. That's yeah. a conversation. Yeah, exactly. Like that's a conversation. It's more like, yo, who like is this? the cool kid table. And yeah, you don't want to look at the uncool kids. Yeah, like yeah. who is this? That's and then that's a whole say. conversation. Then she'll play something else. Women with great music taste is the greatest thing ever. And they have the best pussy. And okay. sex. Okay. I'm not mad at that theory. I see the correlation. They do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in my experience. Yeah. I don't know. You've only fucked thousands of women. I haven't. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. Yeah, but tell them. <laughs> I'm joking. He telling me. Yeah, clear it up with He's the telling people, me. Yeah, yeah clear, clear it up over there. I get heat on my phone after the pod too sometimes. <laughs> Snigger, man. Uh, you didn't tell her your body count? Where, where we at? Where we at? Where, no, they don't ask me that no more. You know your body count? Yeah. Wow. Well, Look at Maul. Shut up. I, Maul hasn't said anything. <laughs> I haven't don't, said don't. one word. I don't. haven't said one Wait, word. Wait, you don't? I don't think so. I mean, I could figure it out if oh, I stopped thinking about it. Oh, wait, we're home. It. My bad. No, I just don't. I don't know. Is she in there? No. Oh, so you can talk. Breathe. I don't know. I don't know the numbers. You say you don't know the numbers. Breathe. I don't, I stopped counting and, and after I said, like, lo- yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, something. And I said, loosen up your hands. <laughs> 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 what, is you tell, what is he telling me? <laughs> Neck choking. I don't know. They can talk. No, nah, let, me, let me help Be Parks yourself. It. Parks and I are drinkers. So That too. Yeah, we stumbled into some things we probably shouldn't have done and pussy? tried to forget about Stumbling it and pussy? succeeded in forgetting about it sometimes <laughs> yeah yeah alcohol that has definitely happened count. to me i've definitely forgot that i've had sex with some women oh, until they wow. reminded me and i'm just awkward now like oh shit or when they say <laughs> hi to you and you look at them like a stranger and they go are you fucking serious or yeah. you see them in like the people you may know on instagram you're like oh i do know her yeah. listen that was the minute i, I think i talked about that before in this podcast that was the minute I but didn't... mlk and fbi yes great watch <laughs> just wanted to that was the reason that. yeah let's circle back to that reset the room uh mlk yes Listen, that's when I knew that Maul couldn't live with me anymore. It was when, when we had got back from Melody, and I woke up and looked over and didn't know who this Pittsburgh girl was that was, <laughs> that was laying there. But she was mad into me. I was like, damn, what I did last night? <laughs> you got romantic I'm like, Yo, I must have really turned it. Yo, when you get... T- when you get too lit and just turn it on, oh, yeah. man. Yeah. Oh, like, who man. Was and then you forgot. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, damn, we was kissing in public. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But anyway, as I'm looking at the girl trying to figure out who she is, Maul texts me. He <laughs> said, yo, look at you. <laughs> <laughs> yo, look what you're doing. It's never good when your friend tells you to look at yourself. Yeah. He said, you he have said, to. He said, yo, you was a wild boy you last time. I'm like, to. damn, man. It always feels terrible when you're hungover. And but like, you have to. That's nah, what friends are for. Because it's your friends you could get wild yeah. around and your friends that's going to remind you of when you was getting yeah, wild. You have, yeah. That's part of it. The next day? Nah. After a night of getting wild? Don't tell wild? me about it. Give me two days. Let nah. me, I you never had to. the right, like, support my wild friends. Yeah. Like, I was just cursing Corey out the other day about when he thought he was slick when I got out of jail and he deleted one digit off of the Molly dealer's number. <laughs> one digit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It only Yo. takes nine tries. Yeah. <laughs> Bam, I'm a, uh, but you don't know which digit it was. No, fuck Corey. <laughs> I was worried to death about the Molly dealer. I thought the Molly dealer died. I'm like, yo, we had such a good rapport. Fam, I dumped all this money into you. You won't even hit me. Yo, all right, nigga, you better be all right. Uh, uh, you better be dead. Yo, what? I went and looked at the number one day. I said, wait. Three 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 seven two one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't text. Why I order? <laughs> Yo, don't do that no more, man. That was a slick move. There's no more Molly dealers, but don't do that no more. Oh man, that's funny. Those are the good old days of Molly. Anyway, where we at? I'm just rambling now. I'm okay. Yeah, no, it's, it's y'all ramble. What happened to y'all life? What y'all like? <laughs> <laughs> What's your life like, nigga? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all ramble. Let's get back to, uh, listen, so over the weekend, I saw JT from the City Girls, and JT is, I love JT, I support her, so i just shut up and leave it there. We support the City Girls. Yeah, I really do, I really do, but her Wi-Fi is too great. <laughs> she, she got that good package? <laughs> Yo. Verizon High Speed? That's easily 500 over 800, whatever, the, whatever yeah. that is. Yeah, yeah, mega, mega yeah, gigahertz. Yeah, it's true. JT said, if the world was open, we would have had hits for real, because we make outside music, crying emoji. True. And to be honest with y'all, the retired MC and me was stuck on that for at least two days. Okay. I got to thinking. You make inside music. Yeah, and I and I and I and I released that way though. Yeah. Like I normally released records. I said that before here too. In uh, in October, December, yeah, anything where the weather was about to get crazy and you could really sit with the music. Yeah. So I understand what she's saying. I do think there's a direct correlation there between. 
outside nice weather seasons yeah. and when you release music. Absolutely. So I get that. I totally agree with her. I was stumped because at what point as an artist are you forced to adapt? And as artists, we've asked ourselves that ourselves that question throughout our careers because times change. Uh-huh. Uh, trends change. Slang changes. How you dress. All that shit changes. This is probably the one time in history where you don't have a choice. Yeah. 2020 there was the is time to adapt. nothing else to do. Yeah. And so when she said that, it, it, so when she said that, it did confuse me for a little bit. Listen, I told y'all a couple weeks ago, I've, I've been talking to fucking financial advisors, accountants, all types of shit, and a lot of them are telling me it's quiet, quiet for the entertainers. I'm sure. Like, quiet, quiet. Like, why did some of y'all keep pretending like the clubs are going to be open and touring is back and shit about to be lit this year at all? It's not. Mm. Right? I'm not far-fetched here, right? Why, no. some, some of these and people act like they don't know that. But I don't even think it's particular to artists that make outside music like the City Girls. It's... Even the indie artists that rely on totally. 200, 300 people shows all oh. around the country also have to adjust. Yeah. So it's not, it's literally everybody in the music business and life, period. Everyone has to adjust. But since we're talking about music, yeah, I'm not just going to say we should feel sorry just for the people that make summer hit records. Mm-hmm. When do this you do everybody it? Everybody in music. When do, you, when do you have to do it versus waiting it out? And when does it become imperative to your career? And. How do you do that today? I mean, in this is, instance, I would say by midsummer last year, you should have been like, okay, we probably got to adjust. You have to adapt. Midsummer last year, I'm still regardless. trying to weigh some of it out. Yeah? Because if they were telling me that the vaccine is coming yeah. in January, February, I'm thinking, April. I'm thinking I could wait till summer 21, fall 21, and still catch them. Yeah. And, and this I is for the. I don't, not think to- that's, I don't think that you're being truthful to who you are. I think you're a doomsdayer. Well, and what is, okay. Yeah. If it were me while I was active, my solution is to release more. Yeah. I'm going to release four projects, five projects, EPs, two packs, Lucy's. I'm going to wild out for the year. Yeah. You're going to hate my guts. <laughs> I'm calling you every day. Yo, what you doing? Let's right. get to it. And that would be my solution. Yeah. But, I'm, but JT and them, they play a different game. Sure. So it's about mass consumption and scale and other things. Clubs, strip clubs. Yeah, I don't know. If I'm JT and them, if I'm the city girls, I'm figuring something out. Now is not the time for me to sit home and say, yo, if outside, we're open. Now, she's probably doing well for herself, so sure. she can say that. But yeah. It's funny. A lot of their allure was waiting. Was free JT for a while. Like well, A lot of the city girls' brand has been anticipation for them to be able to put shit out. Of course, they, of course, they put out music with JT Verse before she went to jail and did just fine. But uh-huh. a lot of the City Girl shit has been waiting. I just don't understand what she's because you said we would have had hits because we make outside music. People have made hits in 2020. True, it wasn't a lot of outside. Music yeah, but even though, like, yeah, but let's use the, let's saying. use the biggest. So I've never in seen the world. an inside music hit. What's an inside music hit? There are inside music hits. Yeah, name one. A hit is a hit. A hit means Adele made inside music hits. Yeah, 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 for sure. Okay, and, and let's say hip hop. I, th- I think Summer Walker made inside hits last year. Hip hop. Because when you say inside, it don't necessarily have to be indoor. You can be in a car, right? Like it don't have to be I'm home meditating. I just can't. I can't. I can't get behind this. Like Lil Baby makes car music. To yeah, me, but, but, you, know, you don't have to be outside in the club. You don't have to be trapped. You don't have to be selling drugs. You can just be in a car going somewhere, and that right. music is appropriate. Yeah, yeah but, sure. I mean, the city girls... If I got company coming to my house, I can turn a little baby on and it's quiet in the background, everything's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the women could do that too when they have their little get-togethers. They play the city girls. If city girls come on to my house, I'm trying to fuck somebody by the end of the night. Yeah, so that's what I just didn't understand. I same mean, with, I, I know, Same with WAP, same with Meg. I know her sentiment mm-hmm. meaning like, you know, things have changed, so we haven't been as active. Did I, I tell y'all that. about when I played WAP 75 times in a row? <laughs> I wish you wouldn't do that, but... <laughs> you know. Look up. Hey, stream, look up. streaming look up. for Atlantic. I don't want to look yeah. up. Yeah, I bet you don't. <laughs> I don't want to look up, nigga. I bet you don't. But you, you can't understand this, mall at all? That I understand they the would sentiment. focus on the clubs and the outdoor scene? Well, I'm just saying the people that make the same type of music have made that type of music in 2020 and been very successful. But I, I think even Drake with that Laugh Now, Cry Later. Damn that, it. that was a we really... We were doing so well, 48 minutes without him. Well, we, let's use the biggest artist in the world during the pandemic. That record but why? was this big, but it could have been him. bigger had it been outside because that was written to be an outside record. 
Yeah, I just don't. I just don't understand. You, you it's a make, sing along. That's meant for a lot of people to stand there and sing it together. I, I get. I get. What, I get what she's saying because they do make music for, you know, the, the, the shake music. Shake your ass. Turn up. Have fun. Get lit. They make that. But not for nothing. They also make TikTok music. Yeah. And well, that's why I said, what's a hit? What makes a hit? A hit because for her, for there's their ways to stream it. Yeah. TikTok. Yeah, there's ways to stream music, and it does. People don't have to be in a strip club or. That's true. And then that, that goes back to adjusting. Yeah. Meg, Meg did it with her album with the dances and everything. All right, I make outdoor music, but let me make a dance and try to get some money on social apps. So every artist has to sentiment. adapt regardless I get the, of, I get the sentiment of COVID behind what or she, not. She was saying, I definitely get the sentiment. But um, yeah, you got to adjust. You got to start making music that people can play wherever. Don't just focus on the club or, you know, shit like that. Just make good music. Yo, while we it on music, everywhere. while we on music, somebody sent me this clip and said this how LMA next album was supposed to sound. This song was made by LMA. <laughs> written by LMA. My British accent so funny. <laughs> produced by L- Okay, I didn't produce it, but I did help. <laughs> Not to be remixed by anyone. But LMA, Jaquise, <laughs> I bloody dare you. Yeah, right? You like that? Truth. New job, new job, I'm. Just truth? <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. No. Man. I get it. I forget it, I get man. It. I get Don't it. even worry about it. See, y'all not gonna trick me into re- reading a meek tweet. <laughs> hey, scream, man! That was a nice try, buddy. No, nah, give it a read. Ah. You want me no. to turn you up? I'm about to just start dropping shit. No promo or nothing. Rap getting weak. All the systems you got to go through to put out music, shit will have you overthinking. He's right. I don't. Yeah, I'm about to. Say, yeah. I don't disagree with him at all. And the type of shit meek makes, because meek can do the outdoor shit and the indoor shit. Yeah. So his yeah. last little EP. His, I mean, I say little EP, but his last EP sounded like outdoor music. It did. Yeah, it definitely did. It sounded like that plays a big part in this. I don't want to get stuck here, but that just plays a big part in this. I feel for JT, but you artists, man, I've said this before and I'll say it again here. Like now is the time to push your creative boundaries. We've never lived in a world like this. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I would that that's who we are. All all we ever have done was tell the story of our time. Mm -hmm. So if there's no outside music, if you think that there's no such thing as outside music, then where are you? What are you pushing your mind to create in a time like this that we've never seen before? I challenge creators to to get get jiggy with that. You better. I, I would be having a blast putting out music. What? Why? Just yeah, because of what time. this time would be doing to my my brain and what it would be making me think of. I thought of three sides to a story in, in O two. Mm-hmm. Today, mm. <laughs> right? People can't go out. They trapped. Vaccines, aliens, Martians, Trump. Are you are you are you kidding me? Yeah. Yeah. Rappers, clothes, all that shit that we thought was fly. It's a new way. It's a blink canvas now. Mm-hmm. You telling me, Joe, who don't care, who never cared about image or how he looking, all this bullshit that none of that matters anymore. Now it's about us living and finding a way. Sign me up. Yeah. Sign me up. But I don't think so many people today in the microwave era are ready for that challenge. We're not looking for longevity. True. Yeah, and look, everywhere where my uh, city girls would prosper, and everybody don't want right? the same thing. It's fine. Huh? Miami is open, right? That's true. Yeah, but you gotta stop saying that. Atlanta, more. Houston. Atlanta's yeah. open. Miami's open. Houston is open. But if you were artist, you would be scared to release a project in where only three major cities are open. Uh, I'm not saying you wouldn't. But and I'm you, saying. listen, you're a woman, so your your budget you've spent. <laughs> Yeah, you spent your budget, your, your maintenance, just maintenance of you. You spent some money. You mm-hmm. can you not doing that? I don't think you're doing that. Doing what? Putting out music? <laughs> not when only three major cities is is rocking. If you feel like you can only make outdoor music, no. I think they make the more funny than shit music. is if JT got introspective. Mm-hmm. Think about it. It'll be interesting. Which, think she, about she that. Has, she has a story. She should. I yeah. know. Yeah, she, I, she, and I, and she, I apologize she, she, if she has done I that. I was going to say, she's... I apologize if she has done that. that maybe record, she has. The, her first day out record, I felt yeah. was introspective. What I mean is, yeah, but it felt like, hey, let me put my introspective record out. Sure. What if she leaned into it? What if I that was just JT that. now? Yo, until niggas come back outside, y'all getting JT that just came home. I'm giving y'all half feel. That's hard. Yeah. I like that. I like it too. Um. All right. Hey, JT, love you, of course. Uh, What else we got? What else we got? Do y'all want to talk about this list now? Sure. 
And not so much the list, because we've seen this before. We've seen this before. Actually, I was just laughing at how these lists used to really fuck with my emotional currency. It's mm. well, well documented. I used to be really, really <laughs> invested. You know, you got to laugh at how stupid you were at an earlier time in life. It's so much more fun in hindsight. I was just saying that, too. Like, uh, compound days, as stupid as we used to act, I appreciate that in hindsight. I not so much as it was happening. I can't give you too much shit because as someone that's not a rapper, these lists have gotten me. <laughs> I could only imagine as a rapper. So and I, I mean, can't give you too much shit. And this is before I knew that these lists were created to, to do that, to mm. get a rise out of you. <laughs> so yeah, they're, now, not, they're not made to be right. They're made to cause controversy and conversation. Well, nothing can be right. Music is subjective. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, you, in some places, it's not. Music is a matter of opinion. <laughs> all they, that, love all say, that, they love to say that. All that dumb shit they say, right? Funk Master Flex has put out his list of the top 50 living MCs. I have nothing to say about this list because I know the purpose of lists. And this is his list. I know when they come out. This is his. Music is subjective. Mm -hmm. Nothing well, no. to argue about. He, he gave his criteria. It doesn't say his opinion. It says skill level. His criteria. Body of work and impact. It's not Funk Flex's favorite Artist. No, just, but that's his criteria. Still. All right, got it. I like that criteria, though. Not mad. Yeah. All right, so let's read them starting from number one. Jay-Z, Three Stack, Nas, Rakim, Drake. See, if you're going to put Drake at five, I don't need to see questionable pen next to his name. <laughs> I, <laughs> that's if a you shame. have him at number five, who cares? But this has been part of Flex, obviously, is something coming because he... He went on with, with Gilly and Wallow and started talking about Drake again and Jay-Z again. Like, clearly this is a part of his scheme to get the attention to whatever he's about to put out. Uh, he talked about Drake's pen and the Funk Flex freestyle when he did the Blackberry shit. Yeah. Um, and then to put Questionable Pen right after that, Flex is obviously doing this on purpose. So Drake, J. Cole, Kendrick, right? Five, six, and seven. Pusha T at eight. Jada Kiss at nine. Black Thought at ten. Uh, KRS, Slick Rick, Lil Wayne, LL, Eminem, 50, Kanye, questionable pen. There it is again. Styles P, Mace, Big Daddy Kane at 20. Then we have Cameron, Buster Rhymes, Fabulous, Red Man, Remy Ma to round out the top 25. Do you guys have anything to say thus far? Not really. Um, <laughs> so that means you have mad things to say, but you won't say it because you're scared <laughs> to death of Funk Flex and you know he'll push your shit back. That All right, what, what, what's the next one? Let me see 26. <laughs> ASAP Rocky, Raekwon, DMX, Most Def, Beans, Lord Finesse, Cool G Rap, Fat Joe, Common, Lloyd Banks, Ice Cube. What? This is a bogus ass list, man. I can't. This just is why I don't have anything to say. I can't say. sit here and keep watching. I'm it. not mad at the is, names. It's the orders. This is a, you can yeah, fight about this is all a day. If, if this is not no particular order, then that's different. Right. But if this is I just found my first problem that that I'll be vocal about. Ice Cube at 36. If you're going off skill level, body of work, and impact by your own criteria, that's all. Yeah. No, if you're going this far, you got to go back to Drake at five. If you're going off a body of work and impact. Somebody could put him at five. And bars, that's, too. That's not disrespectful. I'm not saying it's not, but not with the names above him. Ice Cube at 36 uh, is slow. nuts. That's slow. Uh, then we have Melly Mel, Grandmaster Kaz, Cool Mo D, Meek, uh, Meek, Big Sean, Lauren, Talib Kweli, Ludacris, T.I., Rick Ross, Ghostface, Eve, Nikki, and Young Thug at number 50. What do you think? Good or bad list? So a horrible Did he do his due a diligence? Terrible it's a terrible it's, list. It's, and I've seen a terrible. lot of bad lists in my time. It's, this might be the worst. No, it's not the worst. Now, can you tell not me? The worst, can y'all tell me bad. why this list is so bad without uh, belittling mm -hmm. any MC that's mentioned? No. Got it. It's, yeah. impossible. it's impossible to do. <laughs> That's, That's the point of the list. Yeah. It's to make people shit on people. Well, let me just get to the first five. Hove, three stacks, Nas, Rakim, Drake. I'm not mad at that. I'm mad at that. Drake has had Drake has a better body of work and impact than probably ninety eight percent of rappers ever. So like we just gotta be honest. Like, there's not four names in front of him. Well, he's got the questionable pen uh, asterisk. I understand that, but still, body of work and impact. And bars. Questionable, questionable pen comes in at the skill level bars. Yeah. Cool. And I'm not saying I question Drake's pen or anything like that, but if that's his, no, that's if his, that's his right. shit, then I get it. Yeah, but that he means, still has five. a better body of work than Rock him. You can question the pen all you want. He still has more of an impact than Rock him. I, wouldn't, I don't know about impact. Well, huh? I don't know. Impact? You know what impact means? I do. Okay. 
Do you know what Rakim did to the way people I was, rap? I was gonna say I'm I don't not, think Drake I'm, wouldn't rap the way he rapped. I'm not. If I'm not Rakim saying. Didn't. I'm not saying Rakim doesn't have an impact. I'm just saying Drake has had more of an impact on music, period, than Rakim on music. I don't know. Okay. I mean, you could go if you go back you to the argument. lineage. You could make an argument that Drake's impact is because of the impact Rakim made. Yeah. Oh, we're not doing that. I see where y'all going. And then Rakim had. You can go to Melly Mel's and then put Melly Mel at three then. No, I'm saying directly how Rakim changed how rappers rapped completely. Like, uh, no, into, I, into what no, almost no, no. they rapped You're like today. Talking to somebody <laughs> that grew up on Rakim, I I understand that. I'm just saying body of work. There's not many artists Arguing that have a better either. body of work than Drake. I was only talking about impact. There's not I agree many artists that have a bigger impact than he's had. If you I don't qu- you. if you don't question Drake's pen, you I would be comfortable putting him at two with that criteria of skill level, bars, body of work, and impact. I have Same. no problem with Drake at two. Got you. Yeah. But the asterisk, that's, you know, if that's, I don't agree with the asterisk, but if that's his thing, then I get it. It'll turn me on up in this piece. You on. Oh. <laughs> and that's how I know the vibes is back, Maul. How they back? Huh? I was over there standing to the side in the way of something that Rory needed. He came over there and said, excuse me. I said, nah, what if I don't excuse you? Know what he said? Then I'll move you. You got it, God. Oh, man. Uh, that's that energy? I love uh, sometimes. Peace, that, God. That good tunnel energy uh, right chasing there. Chasing Cash, that's no. my brother from the surf club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's my brother from the surf club right here, Rory. You don't know him. Uh, I don't no, I, I, to surf club. I'm not trying. I don't want you to move me. See, in my life, I, I have been pivoted unwillingly. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's not fun. No. no. When no. you lose your footing? I didn't yeah. lose it. I thought I was stationary. <laughs> <laughs> thought you were planted? Oh, man. I did the whole leg spread. Yeah, uh, nah, tried nah, to move me out. there. I was yeah. dangling in the air. <laughs> yeah. He moved me to a whole separate location. That was kidnapping. <laughs> <laughs> that was kidnapping. Oh, but, man. Look at Maul never been moved. Only Joe. <laughs> hey, only Joe got stories from his past. I mean, it's cool. Being moved. Nobody yeah, else nah. been moved. Oh, I've been moved. Yo, oh, this, no, 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 no. Yo, Tyrese, one time, Tyrese moved me one this night. dude was so polite. I had already lost the fight. Right? Nigga just stood He worked you off? Nigga picked me up. Picked me up at the end of the fight. I'm so glad it wasn't girls around. Don't pick me up. <laughs> no, no, let, let me lay here and get my Dusted bearings. you off a little bit? Let Wait, in my, my last right. fight, I want I pick somebody up too. Oh, see, look at that. But listen, dude, pick me up. Reciprocity. Dragged me over to a tree in my Nietzsche. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dragged my Nietzsche all on the ground. And it just stared at me, like, mercifully, like, nah, you good now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I feel bad. <laughs> thank the Lord. <laughs> I can see the fear in your eyes. Yo, I stayed down till he pulled off, too. <laughs> smart. No, that's smart. I was injured. Yeah, yeah, that's smart. That's yeah, no, nah, I've seen it on Channel ID when dudes fake dead before. Yeah, yeah, yeah it works. It I works. laid there bloody with no blood. <laughs> I, I was so bloody. Dude Don't had to bro. leave. <laughs> I had a chick in the car. <laughs> oh. What's up? You, we out? <laughs> <laughs> no. What's up? We out now? Ma? She said, yeah, she said we I, still, I we still another ride home. Hey, yeah. you lose the fight in front of her, you've lost your ma privileges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's no, no you have to address ma. her by her name, full yeah. name, First name, middle last. name, no, middle, all of that. No, you ma now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you good? She's like, nigga, are you good? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You bleeding, not me. He, oh, he was big. Anyway, so I appreciate Rory for bringing the vibes back. Shout out to the Rory Hive. We here. Um, him, you ever have to try to explain to a girl why you lost the fight to? Nah, she know why. She was there. <laughs> <laughs> he, he fight better than me. excuses you come up with. <laughs> he like, fights better than me. That's my all. hands are trash. Yeah, like, yeah, he fights better than me. Man, you ain't see the puddle? <laughs> <laughs> it's been what, 90 and sunny all day, bro. Come on, let's stay, let's stay immature. What's worse, ducking a girl because you lost the fight or ducking a girl because you got a hickey from another girl on the spot you shouldn't have one? No, nah, definitely. I fight. say that the hickey was what, a fight. What did the spoon solve? <laughs> Remember that move? <laughs> yeah. It didn't work. It hurt more. I have nah, sensitive I skin. Yeah, your whole neck is right now. Then you found your girl cousins with with like the shit that would cover it up, not knowing that girls know makeup, and go, I can see you have makeup on your neck. Yeah. <laughs> a hickey is work. the only thing we never successfully figured out how to lie, lie to. Like the visible hickey. Because there's Remember nothing, when girls used to do dumb. that on purpose just to put you under pressure? Of I course. hate that shit. That was a terrible error. And then you tell them to stop. Why? Because yeah. I don't want you to mark my neck. I don't why? want people to know why? that you, you have a girlfriend. Savage. Why? You have a girlfriend? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. No, I'm just really white. <laughs> <laughs> and this won't go away for a Oh, week. yeah, that was hell for you. Oh, that yeah. was hell for you. And me. You too? Yeah, really? 1,000%. I bruise easily. Well, got to get like Karate do, Man. Do, karate do, Man bruise on the inside. I taught you that. You know what I'm saying? You're not a karate man. 
<laughs> Yo, they made Tiger sound so ill in the dock. We're going to get to the dock. I got to watch that because you keep yeah, talking we gonna about it. We're going to get to the dock. I started to watch it last night, but I, I fell asleep. I watched part one that ended with his wife saying, so what you want me to talk about? Mm. Oh, that's how they left That was a cliffhanger? <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. I got to watch it. So I have a small confession to make to you guys. Okay. Come on, it's your confessions. Don't, 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 don't miss the opportunity. <laughs> Yo, Maul, we taking over the pod game. Man. You producing now? Come on, man. Holy <laughs> shit. Come on, man. Yo, Come on, man. Pot, Take pot, us to the next one. Potters man. beware. Come on, man. Part one and two. Yeah, Ooh, man. You know two. Which, which one is better? One. <laughs> now go to two. We're going to do two for this. You're one of those, Rory. One is better. Go to one two. is not better than two. It go is. to two. Well, I'm playing two. Nah, you playing with me right now. <laughs> Shut up, Usher. <laughs> nah, you for real? <laughs> Stop playing. <laughs> Say swear. <laughs> put put that on God. <laughs> Yo, you know I'm in the studio chilling. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you saying say swear when you were openly walking around the Beverly Center as the biggest act in the world? Right. Hand in hand. Wait, she yeah. found out? <laughs> yes, I sure. Yes, yeah, she did. <laughs> Quick, too. Ten minutes later. You ever seen your ex girl standing with your next girl standing with the girl that you fucking right now? I've never been in that position. I mean, though. shit can get weird unless they all down. Hmm. Yo, Maul was there for a lot of my greatness. Hmm. And that's what perturbs me about our relationship is he never speaks to it. To your, what are you talking they about? were shouting me out in a club mm-hmm. with my girl there, mm-hmm. and you seen me. Mm-hmm. Give it up. Tell them about me. Tell them about how I used to be. Give it up. Honestly, mm-hmm. yeah, I was there that was slick. Nice. You've never done it. Yeah, no, mm-hmm. they've never done it. Mm-hmm. Never got shouted out of the club. No, not what I said. <laughs> not what I said. With your girl, they made it hot. DJ made it hot. Yeah. DJs do make it hot they That'd be the word I told my girl Especially when you low low I said I left Yo I'm heading out man So sleepy <laughs> I am I am so You're just upstairs I am so Exhausted yeah. right yeah, now I'm going home I never even used the word exhausted yeah. <laughs> I am so fatigued She know that That's why she stayed <laughs> Yo That DJ said Yo shout out to Joe Button yeah, yeah. Getting, yeah. His, upstairs getting, fucking, getting his yeah. nipples Licked in the corner Yeah, yeah. He upstairs <laughs> He upstairs in the cut <laughs> oh, oh I had the Ralph Lauren Tucked under the neck <laughs> This dude is Come sick, on, man. man. Look Pull up. your teeth out. Look up. It's funny. Look up. Oh, you told you didn't do it. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're you're she, out. She she head under the route. She couldn't jump up and suck on you. Yeah, it looked like I had that bitch in a headlock. <laughs> Shorty came out, act like I was fighting her. Yeah. Oh, she tracked me. I have a she- girl. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Get off me. Relax. Relax. I am in a relationship. I see. Unhand my nipples. <laughs> Unlatch me. <laughs> Shorty identified her. She was like, no, that's the porn star. I was like, oh! I had no idea. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> I see her now. She looks trash. You seen her? On, the porn star or your ex? Yeah, both. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I came up. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> you won? <laughs> What's wrong with him? Wait, man? how you spell came? <laughs> uh, porn stars don't age very well. Wait. No, they don't. No. I mean, they go through a lot. They they do a lot of physical activity. A lot of dicks. They can make a lot of wear and tear. Yeah, yeah, the wear and tear. Cocaine starts to show. Cocaine and dicks really wear you out. (laughs) Yo, this is how I know I'm getting a hold. (laughs) The name of that song is not "I Came Up." Time to come up and hold my own way, defend my crown. Got to lock it down. And <laughs> when they run for it, too, I'm like, yo, I came up. <laughs> <laughs> what? Go, came white and now. What is that? Coming of age part. Thank two. you very much. Hold up, man. I you were hold up. A big minority <laughs> person. <laughs> Yo, Parks, you swear I'm not a backpacker. I'm going to fight. We're going to fight. Because for the last few weeks, you've been trying to call out my lack of backpacker. I mean, back. When I would not start the pod with MF Doom, Parks is ready to slam all this shit shut. <laughs> yeah. I'm with him. Parks. Yeah. Backpacker. Backpack I was on Zoom Parks. in my crib, perturbed. Rory couldn't believe it. I could have I could have <laughs> shot you over the playlist. Right. But I, listen, I just didn't want to start sad. We, That's understandable. Uh, artists that have passed, we've started with their music. Yes. Okay. That's also true. Was I sad? I don't know. That's your own personal feelings. I started with Vaughn when he passed because his music, hit the way he passed was so represented in the album. I went through that a lot with Pac. Like some niggas that passed their music. And we had just, Vaughn's album came out the week before. 
He passed. That was just like we were just talking yeah. about on the, on the pod MF Doom. Like I him. view is more of a staple. I don't feel like his death had anything to do with his music. Yeah. I do think that was ill that Park said the, in, in the year of the mask. Yeah. They yeah. take the masked man from us. That was that fucked me up for yeah. a week. Mm-hmm. But outside of that, no, nah, I was celebrating. Yeah. When when the when the lyrics are are too true for me, it hits me differently. I'll say that. Okay. okay. I'll say that. Understandable. Like Triple X album after he died? <laughs> Did y'all listen to it? I yeah. didn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I cried on vacation. Yeah. No, it's, it's a little different. Yeah, he was Nigga he, was, he was a kid. Super talented, man. He was a kid. Uh, Ma- Mac, Pac was Mac a kid. Was Big was a kid. Juice Wear was a kid. Niggas is kids. I bomb was a kid. Niggas yeah. is kids. Yeah. Not to be disrespectful, of course. No, they were adult men. Yeah. yeah. But, young, but come on, young. man. Come on, man. All right, where was I at? Where was I at? Where was I at? No, I did trip you. You said you had a confession. You was putting on confessions. You said he had a confession. Got away from my confession. Y'all blew it now. We got three minutes. I'll, okay. We'll come back. <laughs> you missed it. You had to be there. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. All right, I do have a, a few confessions to make if you're prepared for it. Oh okay. God, here we go. Did we decide on part one or two? Two. 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 We can do a poll if you want, but don't be that hipster. <laughs> but I am a hipster, Jeff. That's but true. don't be that hipster. It's two. All right, get your shit off. Come on. <laughs> Everything that I've been doing is all bad. That's that shit. Nigga, if you know it's all bad. If you know it's all bad. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Are you but if you know it, it's, uh, no, no. By the way, it was all bad in part line. one, and then in part two, he went hand in hand, knowing how bad it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know why I appreciate part two? Because part two, at least from what we heard in the rumor report, is that it was really happening in part two. Yeah. In part two, this was no longer a song. I'm telling the truth now. Well, I right. also heard rumors that a lot of that was JD's experience that he was going. Through, I heard that too. Uh, oh, okay. In his life, I heard because he was a big part of producing yeah. confessions mm-hmm. and kind of spiced it up with what Usher was going on with Chili and that whole thing. Mm-hmm. But Usher was like, I didn't do that to Chili guys. Right. Everything <laughs> everything that I've been doing that's is all, all bad. Threw JD under the that, bus. That's that dirt bag. <laughs> Give me the next line. I got chicks in, on the oh, side God. with a crib and a ride. Right. I've been telling you so many lies. Mm-hmm. Like, your self-awareness is all the way up. Just stop. <laughs> Easier Relax. said than done. Easier said than done. Just stop. Nothing worse than getting in trouble with your girl for an affair that you had after you long stopped the affair. Yeah. Like, that, that, I dated that girl on my own a year and a half ago, and here I am in trouble today. It <laughs> that, happens. That'd be the scariest part about self-awareness. Happens, yeah. Like, you, you can have that excuse of just not being self-aware and not knowing. But nope. when, when you know and then do it, then you really got to look at yourself like. That's when they I, just look at you and like, you're so stupid. You're just stupid. Yeah. No. But, yeah, and that hurts. I'm not. I know what's going on. I'm just a scumbag. <laughs> yeah, that too. Yeah, but it's Piece not really shit. about me knowing what's going on with me. It's me, about me knowing how much you know about what's going on. Like, hey, when the chick how much said, I'm doing? Yo, just tell me the truth, and you only got one time. Don't lie to me, because I already be knowing. I'm like, damn, what does she know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you start dancing around it. Did she just speak? To see? Did she speak to her? Yeah. Shorty ain't violating me like that. She didn't speak to the girl, right? <laughs> yeah, they be speaking. Why women, they, women speak? Why men don't speak? Ego. Confession number one. I don't know very much about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Same. I'm in the same boat. And there are, and there are people like uh, Jay and Silva that keeps hitting me saying, oh, I've been telling you for years. Why weren't you on it four years ago? Nigga, I had two rocks to rub together to my name four years ago. <laughs> yeah. And I don't like people that don't know how to explain. I'm not saying this about Silva, but people that don't know how to explain shit correctly asking why I didn't invest. Mm. I don't fucking know. You didn't explain it all to yeah, me. Yeah, you didn't yeah. sell. You didn't sell it well. It's true. Now... Confession number two. I've been snooping around. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you are a snooper. See, that's the thing. They think because you don't know nothing about something that you won't snoop around. Uh, I learned something from the, from the uh, harlots. Mm-hmm. You went in a phone? You went in Bitcoin's phone? So though I don't know much about Bitcoin, I come in here every week and talk about how amazing Cash App is as an app, and we have a partnership with them because... They're into some different ideologies and just see the future in a different way and are interested in doing deals that are different than some places are doing deals today, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's my commitment. Like, when I tell somebody that there's business being done somewhere, for me, I've thoroughly vetted the situation. I'm telling you that it's safe. Mm -hmm. You You have to pay for a nigga as real as myself to come and tell you that some institution is safe, right? But I don't know nothing about Bitcoin. So I go and see, and in a, in a moment of transparency, I'll share this with y'all. 
when I went to see uh, I put my whole Avengers cape on. When I went to see Hove and to to just talk. Damn, I guess I did choose the fifty thousand uh, the dinner with Hove <laughs> <laughs> instead of the fifty thousand dollar Bitcoin. <laughs> I never understood why somebody would take the 50K instead of the dinner. Really? Yes. And that's the mistake that we'll get to it. It depends on where you're at. So I go yeah. through, You're right. <laughs> but that's the mistake. A lot, I think a you, majority of people should are take right. the money. Y'all are right. But that's the mistake. Some of us start out with no money to have, no money to find, no parents with money, no way to get money. Mm-hmm. So it's a conversation we're not typically involved in. Mm-hmm. That's where systemic, uh, systematic oppression and all that shit comes in, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But what I didn't tell y'all, when I went to see Hove to talk about just life, in the top of the talk, he was talking to me like I was a member of the media. Mm. Uh, he has a point. I don't like that. <laughs> That's not your choice mm-hmm. to be talked to. If, Under- some, if, if someone, I'm not saying, oh, I'm saying any human being, if Understood. perceives you as the media. Understood. It's none of your I, am, I am a member of the media, so I guess people sure. should be careful when they speak to me, even though my integrity is through the roof. You won't meet too many with this type of integrity. It's safe when you speak to Joe. I'm a vault. I didn't disclose any of Maul's secrets. <laughs> right? <laughs> I ain't telling none of that shit look, you like, right? Look what's in your vault. <laughs> nah, Maul had, vault? Ma- Ma- yeah, Ma- Ma had a keyhole in his door. Sometimes I peep through in the mornings. Freaky ass nigga. <laughs> <laughs> fucking freak, freak, freak nasty nigga anyway but listen so when I'm he speaking to him and he's muscles. talking to me like a member of the media cool for maybe five minutes and he said yo what's going on man what's your future plans what's going on at this point I'm negotiating with every DSP in the universe I'm, I'm on my high horse nigga what's up <laughs> picture it cause mm-hmm. I shouldn't even be sharing any of this picture it yeah what's up I thought you were a vote. hey they all want me <laughs> that's what you told mm-hmm. Hove no <laughs> I was quiet and drinking my water but when he was like, yo, what's your, what you going to do? And I said, nothing. <laughs> I'm going to chill out. Which, by the way, isn't a I, bad, bad answer I, at all. I ain't in a rush. What am I rushing to do something for? Right. He said, yeah, but what's going on with you? And I said, I said yeah, we got to deal with Cash App, right? And mm-hmm. what I didn't tell y'all in a moment of transparency is when I said that as a fellow, I, I could feel, I could feel different energy when I said it. Okay. His eyes lit up. Mm. He said, smart. Just do it. We'll talk later. Hmm. And then left. <laughs> like Batman. <laughs> Just disappeared into Yo. dust. <laughs> hey. Just evaporated. Hey. Then he got up and headed to the exit. I followed him. He walked me out. <laughs> but I'm not done. I'm not done, Sean. <laughs> he then went into... Very cryptic guy. He then went into... Crypto guy. Mm. <laughs> Yo, is there a booth around? <laughs> Yo, is there a booth? There is, right, right Somewhere here. Somewhere hold up, man. <laughs> oh, oh, crypto, she dip. <laughs> okay, no, by, no, the no, no, by the way. I know. I know. By the way. My booth is closed. No, 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 hold on. Hold on. <laughs> if, if Joe makes Flex's list, this is pen uh, questionable because he stole it cri- from parts. Uh, crypto, she did yes. low. My shit go. Mm. Uh, now I see how you gave it to them right there. I didn't yeah, see I didn't it. Think about the I didn't go. see it. You didn't see it? No, I didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> I missed that one. That's actually when Hope Hit left. the club, salute the DJ. <laughs> oh, my shit like, no, go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, know, hey. I know he's talking about podcasting, but what about this bar? Yo, every time I break into like <laughs> a new freestyle, the whole meeting. I never get support. <laughs> I never get support when I break into so like. So you, you ain't rapped the whole brunch, huh? You ain't rapping the whole. I'm whole trying. Brunch? I'm trying to give you an exclusive debut of my uh, shit go. That's the name of it. My shit go. Yeah. My shit go. Just sit down, <laughs> man. Why you? Why you coming over here, man? <laughs> yes. Come on, put your phone down. Look at Basie like jumping in. Go. Oh, man. Look at Basie holding go. him down. Yo, jump right no, in. No, listen, listen, listen. I'm playing around. I'm playing around, but this is very serious. Yeah. Of course. These dudes that won't tell you, I believe in business. The the thing about business, they'll know what's coming and they won't tell you, and that's how you capitalize. Ta-da. So when he said that and escorted me out of his building, and on the way out, he was he was talking something about disrupting the banking system. I looked him in his eyes. You ever respect somebody so much that you gotta look them in the eye. Let me look at this nigga, man. <laughs> Let me see Wait. if you believe what you're saying. Yeah. Right? You ever hear somebody that you think is a genius? Say something that is so out of whack that you believe it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
And if you're going to believe Jeez, something yeah, like this, you believe it from the guy that made reasonable doubt. Call me a dick rider. Suck my dick. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right? So he says of all of this. He says all this. Cool, I leave. Fine, I respect Hov. He said that. Then I'm seeing the articles, right, that Jack Dorsey, co-founder of Square, or founder, I don't know. I just I think there's somebody else there. But founder or co-founder of Square has invested all of this money into Bitcoin. And then you start thinking of all the people that told you years ago Bitcoin would be something. Yeah. And then you start thinking about financial literacy and, ha- and my fight and our fight with Spotify and how we just keep saying, yo, we need a seat at a table. Mm-hmm. We understand the value of things and we want to participate in ways that are outside the box of salary, talent hires, and all this other shit. Right. So when you go to the table and you start asking for stock and they look at you like you're crazy because you're a black dude, What's the alternative? Start your own currency. Mm. So I don't have to know anything about Bitcoin. But when I saw Jack Dorsey invested in all of this money, 5% of his whatever, into Bitcoin, I said, okay, now that's a few geniuses that are telling me this. Mm. So behind you guys is back. (laughs) I picked up the phone and I made a phone call and I said, hey. You called Jack? Anonymous person. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> we need in. <laughs> we need. We need to participate. <laughs> what you do if, with Savon's race? If Bitcoin is if Bitcoin <laughs> is going on crazy, Rory, I'm such the man that whatever I'm about to say affects no one's pay at all. I'm, j- I'm joking. Relax. Go ahead. But stroke, let's celebrate. Now, nah, beat me ego. up. Give me yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hold up. Turn my drop up, bitch. Hold up. It's me. The pop father's here, goddammit. So I called someone and begged. Rest in peace, combat. <laughs> you know the vibes. Rest in peace, combat, Jack. So I called someone and said, yo, is it possible that I can take a small percentage of a deal in Bitcoin? And someone said, yes. Mm. Round of applause, right? So I'm here to say that I have Bitcoin for everyone. I did it. They said yes. And I don't know what it means, but I'll take a pound. Uh, yeah. And now we have a start in the game. Oh, pound is a currency, yo. I have Get in the booth. I Whoa. have 5,000 something. Is it Bitcoin, Saratoshi? I don't know what you call this. See, Satoshi. Satoshi. Who knows what you call this? More. I love that 5, restaurant. 5,000 Satoshi to you. 5,000 Satoshi to you. What does that mean? 5,000 Satoshi to you, Rory. 3,333 Satoshi to you, Erickson. (laughs) I love it. Huh? Of course you will. I know what it means. 3,333 Satoshi to you, Savon. Yeah, man. What does that mean? And Alex, 3,333 Satoshis to you. Good man. I want to thank each and every one of y'all for y'all contributions here. Y'all know we couldn't have got this far without what all of us do. No doubt. And I don't know what this means. <laughs> <laughs> so you just... Either way, either way, I like the intention. You just thought yeah. he got some shit off. <laughs> 5,000, nigga, what the fuck do that mean? <laughs> fuck is you no, you owe 5,000. Nigga, I'm joking. <laughs> Who the fuck is Satoshi? You get a Satoshi. <laughs> you get a Satoshi. Satoshi Everybody, look at how ignorant we are. What the fuck is that, nigga? What the fuck, <laughs> the fuck is Satoshi, Who's nigga? Satoshi, nigga? Who the fuck is Satoshi? <laughs> Wait, wait, let me do it. <laughs> wait. Tell me 5,000 no. Satoshi. Uh, I've never met you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, yo, Rory is Googling Satoshi right now. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. Fuck Satoshi. I don't know this nigga. Uh, <laughs> I love that restaurant. <laughs> yo, Ma, yeah. I wish I could tell you more. Tell I don't know more. what a Satoshi is. <laughs> so you just know I got 5,000? I know that you got a bunch, and we all got a bunch, and it's a good start. So now I welcome you all to join the headache and anxiety attack that watching the stock market is. Woo! Couldn't wait. No, it's something I've been meaning to do for a long time. I'm and outside stupid. of that, because we don't know what it means, and I, wanted, and I want to shout out to Cash App. Thanks. No doubt. Smoke that. <laughs> they smoke that. Yeah, I'm with you. I uh, listen. I'm on ISO look, right now. This, this is your, nigga ain't stop they smiling. They're negotiating. Uh, this nigga ain't stop smiling. Nigga ain't stop smiling, huh? Well, Alex understands it. 
Um, I, yeah, we do not. I just want to know, does Satoshi give account? Well, let him come over here and tell us what the fuck. What's the name? Uh, well, oh, Erickson the, understands. I think that we actually have a professional. Oh, wait, wait, yeah, Alex Erickson. Y'all yeah. relax. Y'all sit down nah, to Silver Gear. He's knowing what he's talking about with this shit. No, nah, it's true. So we we do have we do have a special guest to help explain what some of this shit is to us. Yeah. So I want to get there. This gentleman's name is Anthony. Pardon me, Anthony Pompolano, better known to the world as Pomp. And this is the gentleman that all of my rich friends told me to call when I wanted to learn about Bitcoin after I had a little bit of Bitcoin. So I'm excited about this, and I can't wait for... Hey, fuck it. Let's just talk to the guy. Come on. Bring him up. Bring him up. Bring him up. You guys ready to do this? I'm fucking ready to rock and roll, Pomp. I'm super excited. I'm honored to have you here. All right. Parks has hit record. So listen, we have a very, 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 very special guest here today. As you guys know, last week I attempted to talk to you about stocks and I sounded like a complete idiot. But I want to responsibly use my platform and introduce Anthony Pompolano, better known as Pomp. Someone, Listen, Pomp, we do, I'm trying to do this new thing where we change for the new year. And I, I'm, trying to invite right. people, I'm trying to invite people that are more educated than us in certain areas. <laughs> which, which is actually a lot of people. Yeah, that's a lot of people. So we want to welcome you here to the Joe Budden Podcast. Thank you for joining us. How you feeling? I'm feeling great. I don't know if I'm more educated, but I got some uh, some opinions, so we can go through those. But uh, I think you guys are doing just fine yourself. Thank you. I appreciate that. I respect that. that. So listen to this. Bitcoin. <sighs> it's going crazy out here. And all of my friends are coming to me and telling me about how crazy it's going, just like they were a whole bunch of years ago. <laughs> when I ignored them because it wasn't tangible money. I told them, if I can't go in the gas station and buy my cigarettes, then why are you wasting my time telling me about this? Tell me how stupid I was. <laughs> and, and what Bitcoin were you pretty, is. What you say? And what Bitcoin is. <laughs> All right. So first of all, Joe, you were pretty stupid for not listening, but we'll get to that in a second. Let's back up a little bit. And to understand Bitcoin, we got to understand the traditional financial system. Right. Mm. And so what a lot of people can wrap their heads around is there's a complete separation. The rich get richer and the poor get poorer. But what people don't realize is the system is built to do that. Right. Like that is how the system is built. It is not a bug in the system. It is a feature of the system. And what that basically means is it's not so much a a wealth uh, disparity. It's an education disparity. Mm. And so what rich people know that poor people don't know is that the dollar gets devalued. And all that means is if I give you dollars and you sit them in your bank account and you put a hundred bucks in the bank account, you come back in five years, that $100 buys you less goods and services than it did when you first put it in there. So literally, although it says I put a hundred dollars in and a hundred dollars is still sitting there, the hundred dollars buys less because the price of cars and houses and food and all this other shit went up in value. Mm -hmm. So literally Mm -hmm. now it takes me more dollars to buy the same stuff than it did five years ago. So what rich people do is they know this. They're like, shit, I'm not going to just hold on to this dollar that keeps losing value over time. I'm going to invest it or I'm going to buy things with it. So what they do is they go and they say, rather than hold dollars, I'm going to buy real estate. I'm going to buy stocks. I'm going to buy gold. I'm going to buy Bitcoin. I'm going to buy all these investable assets. And so when you look at the numbers, the bottom 45% of Americans don't own a single investable asset. They own no investments. They just have cash and they live paycheck to paycheck. So what happens is when the government right now during the pandemic, all this stuff, they're like, hey, we're going to come save you. I'm going to give you guys a stimulus check. I'm going to print all this money. I'm going to do all this. What they're actually doing is they're devaluing the dollar. So they'll give you $2,000 right now, but they're actually making those dollars worth less and less over time. So all Bitcoin does is said, you don't got to be a genius. You can take your dollars, convert them to Bitcoin. And over a long period of time, the Bitcoin is going to go up in U.S. dollar value. That's so, it. Like so that, that is literally me, it. It's a so, different currency that doesn't get de- devalued away. But Pomp, well, first of all, I feel like a jackass because my hit song was Pump It Up and your name is Pomp and I haven't done Pomp, 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 Pomp It Up. <sighs> Save on. I didn't do I'm that. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, just saying. Pomp, I didn't I'm do sorry. That. Let's put an edit. I'm sorry, yeah, it's fine. That. Pomp, but listen. Listen, listen you saw, do you see everybody on Twitter? They said you, you uh, misspelled my name when you made the song. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And that's why I love Twitter. But Pomp, the bank told me that my money would collect interest when it's in there, and that's why I should put it there. 
Yeah. So your, your money does collect interest, but if you look at what the bank does, right, when you put your dollars into the banks, let's say you, uh, I don't want to use the name of any banks, but you put your money into the bank. They say, cool, it's our money now. I'll give you an IOU. So you put a hundred dollars and they say, I owe you a hundred dollars. They take your hundred bucks and they go and they lend it out on the back end. They're lending it to people and they're earning money on that, uh, le- on that loan. So let's say that they maybe earn 200 basis points or 2% on your hundred dollars. They then turn around and say, cool, we'll give you a little tiny bit of that. So we make $2, but we'll pay you three cents or five cents of the money that we earned. So the bank makes all the money and they pay you only three or five basis points. Oh, like Spotify. And so even though they're paying. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so no. just like the I'm not getting involved no, no, in all please that. Don't. Uh, please don't. That's, that's my bad. I Paul. love Spotify. Please please turn my volume Me up too. on Spotify. I love Spotify. <laughs> I love iTunes too. Uh no, listen. When uh when, when you look at what the actual bank is doing is they're paying you a little bit of interest, but they're not paying you enough interest to beat inflation. So inflation is like 2%. So if the bank doesn't pay you at least 2%, even though you're earning a little bit of interest, you're still losing purchasing power. So the whole idea here is one, you've got a position to just tell people like, hey, if you put 100% of your wealth, all of the money you have in dollars and set it in your bank account, the financial system is fucking you. Like you are getting fucked by the banks, you're getting fucked by the central bank, and you are literally becoming poorer over time by saving. Savers get screwed and investors win. Like that is the most core thing to personal finance is you have to invest money in order to protect your wealth because the dollar is getting devalued over time. Hmm. Okay, so what what is Bitcoin's incentive for us to invest in them? Of course, I know what the banks are doing with our money, but what is Bitcoin doing with it? All right. So the reason why all that happens with the dollar is because they keep creating more of the dollar. They're devaluing it by creating more and more dollars. Mm -hmm. Bitcoin is a digital currency. So it's just like the dollar is a currency. This is a digital currency, but it is decentralized, meaning nobody owns it. Nobody controls it. There's no individual. There's no organization. There's no government. Nobody controls it. And when nobody controls it, the only way to make a change to it is if more than 51% of people agree to make the change. So remember the legacy system last year, we thought we all knew the rules, but then all of a sudden the central bankers and elected officials like, nah, we're going to change the rules. We don't care what you guys think. We're going to change the rules because we think we know what's best for you. And so in that system, we get screwed as individual citizens. But in this new system, nobody can change the rules. The rules are written publicly so everyone can see them and nobody can change them. And so when you have a decentralized digital currency, you can now save in that currency. And because they can't create more than 21 million Bitcoin, actually what happens is when demand increases and you have a fixed supply, it's like real estate. If there's a hot area in town and there's only so much real estate and it's hot, what happens? Yeah. The prices go up. Go up yeah. Same thing in Bitcoin is there's only 21 million. And so what people are doing is they're using Bitcoin as a savings technology. I just keep saving my wealth in Bitcoin. They're not creating more of it. So over time, it'll appreciate in price and it'll appreciate in purchasing power. So it's 180 degree difference than what they're doing with the dollar. So why isn't the on- why isn't the inventor of Bitcoin the owner who made up Bitcoin and why don't they own it? Why did they freely give it away? Yeah. So the whole idea of uh, kind of the world that we live in today is we've lived in a world where uh, we basically celebritized founders and we really, really love centralized institutions. So Facebook and Instagram and Google and Twitter and all these companies, they all the value accrued to them and they had a leader at the top. So it's a kind of a hierarchical structure and those companies get all the power. Well, we're figuring out like maybe we shouldn't live in a world where one dude can make the decisions for literally hundreds of millions of people, right? One company shouldn't accrue all that value. So what Satoshi Nakamoto, which is a pseudonymous person or group, we don't know who it is, which is part of the- I don't know what pseudonymous means. Basically means that they use a a, a burner account, right? Is the best way to think about it. It's like a burner account for real life. They use a a name, but nobody knows actually who's behind it. it. Got it. And so the reason why that's valuable is right now when the government's mad at Mark Zuckerberg, they're like, yo, Mark, you better come in front of Congress and testify. Or if you don't do that, we're going to sanction you. You know, mm-hmm. we're going to come after your company. We're going to regulate you. We're going to put you in jail. It's crazy shit. With this, they can't. They don't know who it is. So they can't call anybody in front of Congress. They can't arrest anybody. 
The other thing is if the government got mad at Amazon or Facebook or whatever, they'd be like, hey, we're going to come to your headquarters and we're going to say, if you don't shut down your company, you're in trouble. They can't do that with Bitcoin because it's decentralized. So when the person that or a group that created it put it out into the world, they put a financial incentive. They said, hey, if you start running this software and more and more people do it across the world, they're not going to come to every single person's house and be like, yo, Joe, you got to shut down your computer. You can't have this Bitcoin software running anymore. Why not? There's just wait, too many people. Wait, wait, no, no. Let me yeah. offer some okay. pushback, Pump. Sorry, buddy. This is where, and this is where I didn't invest. So you're telling me that the inventor of Bitcoin is a fucking myth. Yeah. He's an urban legend. We've never cool. seen him. Nobody's met him. Can't you see how that could offer some reservation to people when you're talking about such a grandiose idea? So let me let me explain this, right? When you think of that, you're, you're thinking of who the inventor is. The inventor said, it doesn't matter who I am. I'm going to post all the instructions and the rules to this system. I'm going to post it online so every single person can read through it. They can verify what's here. And... I will let you, including Joe Budden and everybody else, you all have a say in what happens to this system. So you now own part of the system, but we all have to agree to change anything in the system. But how so do the we inventor so, just says, go ahead, please. Go ahead. I was no. going to say, how do we know that he say, won't, so, uh, how do we know he won't change his mind? Yeah. Or the system could he conveniently can't. crash. He can't because here's the beauty. It's being super non-egotistical, right? Why do the founders of these companies still retain control? It's because they think that they understand it better. And in many cases, they do understand the system better than most people. They want control. When it comes to Satoshi Nakamoto, they said, look, I'm no different than all of you. I'm just one person out of billions in the world. We're all going to do this together. And then the way that the code's written is they can't come in and make any changes without everybody agreeing. So, so in a decentralized world, basically what they do is they give up control in the beginning intentionally to ensure that there is security and defensibility in the system. Okay. I and wanna, so now this thing's $700 billion. Like there's literally 100 plus million people using this thing and nobody knows who created it. I want to shout out to Volvo. And I'd like to read you something that, that I read recently. All right. This gentleman's name is Niels Bolin. And it says, Niels Bolin, an engineer at Volvo, invented the three-point seatbelt in 1959. The 1950s were a time when pilots and racing drivers wore harnesses, but seatbelts, where they were fitted fitted in cars, took the form of a rudimentary two-point waist restraint. In crashes, sometimes these did more harm than good. The reason the three-point seatbelt is so widely adopted is actually because Volvo opened up the patent so that any car manufacturer could use it in their design. They decided that the invention was so significant that it had more value as a free life-saving tool than something to profit from. Is that similar to what's going on here? You're, you're a, a, a poet, and you don't even know it. Yes, absolutely. Right? Right? Like if you think too. about what ends up happening and around innovation, it. is if you give it to the world and everyone works on it together – it will drastically accelerate the pace of innovation. And so that's what's happening here is where that seatbelt ended up being a life-saving technology Mm -hmm. in terms of literally preserving people's lives. Mm -hmm. Bitcoin is a financial life-saving technology. It is preserving your financial health by protecting your purchasing power so that central banks cannot devalue it away. It is literally going to change people's lives because it prevents the rich from getting richer and the poor from getting poor. Now, Pomp, I'm a cynic and a skeptic. So when I'm listening to you, I hear I hear the potential for totally derailing the banking infrastructure as we know it, which I'm in total support of, <laughs> by the way. But as a cynic, I can't see how the government would allow that. I don't see it. Or, or what is stopping them from it. passing some type of legislation that bans all of crypto if, if they're not participating in a way, like they did with fucking weed, like we've seen them do time and time again. No, am I off here? Yeah. yeah. You're, listen, you're right. But here's what I would say. I'm going to so invest one is all Street- my money in this shit, and then one day the government come up and say, you know what? Nah, it's dead. And then I'm fucked? 
Nah, because you got to remember one, Wall Street is benefiting from this. Fidelity, Guggenheim, mm. uh, Paul Tudor Jones, all these traders, all these banks, they're all getting in the game. They ain't going to let everyone get rich and they're going to sit by and watch it happen, right? They're definitely going to get in the game. They're doing that now. And that's why the price has been running so much. But the second thing is that there's this global uh, kind of game theory playing out, which means that the United States comes out and says, you know what? Nah, screw this. We're not going to let you guys do this. We're going to ban it. Right. They could they could do that. They could try one. They can't shut the network down because it's decentralized. So they can't actually stop it. What they could say, though, is if you hold Bitcoin, I'm going to throw you in jail. But what that'll do is Russia, China, Iran, North Korea, Venezuela, uh, Zimbabwe, all these other countries around the world. They're going to be like, cool. The U.S. doesn't want to use this system. Let's all get together and we're going to use this system and we're going to get off the U.S. dollar. We're not going to use the dollar anymore. And so that risk to the United States is way greater than people starting to adopt Bitcoin. Right. And so now what we've got is we literally have politicians in Congress and the Senate who are running around saying we should be embracing this. We shouldn't be fighting it like this is a technology innovation. And if America wants to remain the number one innovation country in the world, we got to embrace this stuff because if we fight it, we're just going to lose and some other country is going to win, you know, because they embraced it. So I think that's where the U.S. kind of gets caught, where they're damned if they do and they're damned if they don't. Here's something that I read recently about Square. And Jack Dorsey is a good friend of mine. That's a lie, but I really look up to him. <laughs> I was like, well, I didn't know that about you. He's a, you he's, left that out of he's a our real, friendship. He's a real inspiration to me, and I really admire how he moves out here. So he's one of the gentlemen that I look to for just phenomenal behavior, right? If, if you tweeted with him, then you can say that you're best friends. Like, he don't even have to respond to the tweet. If you just tweet at him, then you're basically best friends. I don't, okay. I don't know if I've ever tweeted at Jack. I'm going to tweet him tonight. <laughs> I'm going to tweet Jack tonight. Jack, we love you over here, buddy. But listen to this. So I read Square buys $50 million in Bitcoin as part of a larger investment in cryptocurrency. I believe Jack Dorsey to be a genius. What the fuck is he up to? <laughs> Honestly, tell so me. So if you go back. Do you know? Right, so first of all, Jack. Yeah, listen, Jack is a genius. Here's, the, here's what you got to know about Jack Dorsey, right? Everyone is looking at him saying he runs Twitter and he runs Square. This man is one of the greatest entrepreneurs that we have in our lifetime. He's built two multi-billion dollar companies. Big facts. And the best part, Big facts. guess what's in his Twitter bio? There's one word in his Twitter bio. Bitcoin. God. Oh. That's it. <laughs> nah. Bitcoin. No, Bitcoin. That's it. And the reason is because he wow. understands how powerful this technology is, right? Bitcoin is probably going to become the global reserve currency in the future. Every country, everyone's going to use it. So what he did with Square was he said, look – individuals were choosing to take part of their wealth, right, part of the money in the bank and say, I got some cash in U.S. dollars. I'm going to put some of it in Bitcoin to protect myself in case something bad happens to dollars. And so once companies start, or once individuals started to do that, then Wall Street firms started to do it. So now you see, you know, Fidelity and JP Morgan, all these guys all started to play the game. Now we're starting to see companies do it. So there's this company called MicroStrategy. This guy, Michael Saylor, is an absolute gangster. He literally took 85% of his balance sheet, which he had half a billion dollars in cash. And he said, screw it. And he put it all in Bitcoin. Then he raised $600 million in debt. And he put all that in Bitcoin too. So he put over a billion dollars in Bitcoin and just sat it on his balance sheet. And then Jack came out uh, with Square and he said, cool, we're going to start with 1%. We're going to put about $50 million in Bitcoin. We're going to sit it on our balance sheet and use it as a reserve asset. The reason why they're doing that is because the monetary policy, all that means is the central bankers are doing all kinds of funny business, Mm -hmm. trying to screw up the dollar. And so these guys want to protect themselves. Eventually, everyone's going to do it. Elon Musk is going to do it with uh, Tesla, all the way down the line, every company. Well, that was a couple, a few of my next questions. You're killing this shit right now, Pomp, by the way. Pomp, 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 pomp. All right, listen, listen. But does Jack doing that ensure that the Bitcoin never goes below a certain point? (laughs) <laughs> no he doesn't but remember if you ever take like an economics 101 course just supply and demand I didn't. right i dropped whether out 10th su- grade whether you're t- i dropped out all right well grade. listen ready here's the best part supply and demand applies to every market whether you're talking about illegal drugs music real estate or bitcoin literally <laughs> supply and demand applies to every market mm-hmm. and so when you think about it is when you have fixed supply 
right? Whether it's real estate or weed, if there's a fixed supply of something and demand continues to increase, if you're a capitalist, what do you do? You raise prices, Mm -hmm. right? Like that's it. If there's only so much weed for a neighborhood and there's a lot more people that want it today than yesterday, you raise prices. If there's a school and they've got a line out the door for people to go to their college and they know that line's not going to go away, they raise prices, right? They only got so many seats. Same thing with Bitcoin is that there's a fixed supply. There's only 21 million Bitcoin. And now more and more people are showing up saying, I want this Bitcoin. But because it protects your purchasing power, the Bitcoiners don't want to sell. I'll never sell my Bitcoin. I don't want to sell. I don't care what the US dollar price is. I'm not selling my Bitcoin. And so when Goldman Sachs or JP Morgan, whoever shows up and says, give me your Bitcoin, and they say, I'll get you 20,000, 25,000 for 30, 40,000 dollars. I don't care. I'm not selling it, but somebody will. And so they're just going to keep bidding higher and higher and higher and higher over time. And the US dollar price is going to go up. But if you look at the people who are holding it, they believe that this is a scarce asset. And so they're going to hold it forever. What about other cryptos? I know Bitcoin is the big name, but what's stopping other people from making their own crypto? Because I saw that happen a couple of years ago at the first Bitcoin craze. What happened? Yeah. How cryptos, does that work? But how does Bitcoin compare uh, mm. to all of the other cryptos? So, so just think of it as they're all uh, vying for different things, right? So if you think in the traditional financial system, you basically have you got stocks, you got bonds, you got currencies, you got commodities. There's four types of assets. Bitcoin is the winner for a cryptocurrency. It's trying to be a store of value and a medium of exchange. And a currency really is just a, a belief system. It's a religion, right? Mm-hmm. Why do we all trust the dollar? If I give you this green piece I of don't. paper, why do you take it? I don't. You and I both believe it has value. There ain't shit back in it other than a bunch of guys with guns that have a U.S. flag on their arm. That's it. But we all believe that it has value and therefore we'll trade it back and forth. Bitcoin is now becoming the same thing. We believe it has value. Therefore, people are willing to exchange it for goods and services. There's other types of crypto assets, but they're not trying to be a currency. They may try to be a commodity, a stock, like, you know, other stuff. But Bitcoin is the king when it comes to the cryptocurrency bucket. And I don't think anyone's going to unseat it because it's a network effect, right? Once everyone starts using it, you're not just going to all leave to go use a different one because then there's nobody using the new one. Like, like you're incentivized to stay on the existing one. And so now it's reached that kind of escape velocity. Like it's going to be the king for a very, very long time. We've seen in sports, uh, we've seen a member of the Pittsburgh Steelers take some of his contract in Bitcoin. Uh, I want to say that was Spencer Dinwiddie in the NBA that did the same. I think we spoke about that here. Let's pretend that I took a portion of one of my deals in Bitcoin. Uh, How conservative or non-conservative should I be in that regard? And... How stupid would I be to do that? And what are some of the advantages that come along? Why are people starting to do that? So let me ask you three questions and so I can answer it well. How old are you? 40. All right. How many streams of income you think you got? Uh, more than 10. All right. And uh, what would you say your risk tolerance is right now? Super risk taker or not very risk taking at all? I love a risk. I love you should take 100. percent You should take 100 percent of your deal in Bitcoin and hold it. Don't sell it, and you will be an absolute gangster ten years from now. So what can you? What can you? What, current, what can you currently? Wait, buy Bitcoin? wait! This thing is that take 100 percent of the deal in Bitcoin. Oh, you believe, believe, believe. <laughs> Yo, you want to know how much? Wait, 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 wait. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but you also got money. Don't do that. <laughs> you you want to you know how much of my net worth I put in Bitcoin? Yes. 100? Yes. Over 95%. Well. <laughs> but, but, but what can you well, currently that's how much I believe. What can you currently purchase with Bitcoin? Or and you, how, can't, you, you can't use it now. Th- think of it this way, right? Is you don't want to purchase things with Bitcoin in the sense of it protects your purchasing power, right? Why do people buy real estate? You ever hear your parents or somebody you know, right? Some rich person is like, real estate always goes up. It's a fixed supply. Mm -hmm. And as long as more and more people want real estate, the price is going to go up. Bitcoin is no different. It's a fixed supply. And so if the price is going to continue to go up over time, you don't want to spend it today, right? You guys probably heard the story. There's this guy who spent 10,000 Bitcoin on two pizzas back in like 2010. And now it's like, could buy like seven jets. Like, (laughs) hey, you probably shouldn't have spent the Bitcoin, right? (laughs) Right. So it's the same thing here is... The Bitcoin that you buy 
right? I, I, I say that you should take 100% of the deal, right? Because you've got multiple streams of income. So you're going to get paid in cash and other deals and you've, and you've got a high risk tolerance. That's not for everybody. Other people, maybe they should put one, two, three, four, five percent 5% of their net worth into Bitcoin. And you don't have to buy a full Bitcoin. A full Bitcoin is $38,000 right now. You can literally buy $5 of Bitcoin or $10 of Bitcoin. So you go on something like Cash App or, or one of these platforms. Where you only you need just- $1 to get in the game. One dollar. Yes. That was a big misconception for me a long time ago. I thought you needed a little more money to get in this game. You can start this with a dollar on cash. Yeah, out. you can literally say, yo, every two weeks I get my paycheck. I'm going to take 20 bucks. I'm going to put it in Bitcoin. And I'm just going to every time I get my paycheck, I'm going to put $20. I'm a dollar cost average. I don't care what the price is. Every two weeks I'm putting 20 bucks in and I'm just going to accumulate Bitcoin over time. Think of it like a savings account, because the difference here is rather than saving in dollars and having it lose money in the bank, you're saving in an asset that is protected from being devalued away. And so literally you can be a saver again and you can actually build wealth, right? Think of people in India and a lot of these other cultures. What do they do? They save their family wealth in gold and Mm -hmm. in jewelry. In America, the richest families, they put it in real estate Mm -hmm. and then they hand that shit down from generation to generation. You can't do that with dollars. If I put money in the bank today and I give it to my kid in 30 years, he's literally going to be broke. And it don't matter how much money I put in the bank because it's going to lose 90% of its purchasing power. With Bitcoin, you can literally just save in Bitcoin, hold it. You can hand it to your kids and it's going to be worth more than it is today because it protects your purchasing power and it's a fixed supply asset. So if you literally said, yo, I'm going to take 100% of my deal in Bitcoin and everything else you don't buy Bitcoin with, it'll pop off. Because you're going to literally hand it to your kids one day. It's going to be worth money, more money than it is today. Um, I have a question for you. Then Rory will follow right up. Uh, what? So, so, so speak to some of the rumors I'm hearing about how Bitcoin could go as high as 100,000 per coin this year. Some say 200,000. I won't reach for the stars. But, like, is that is that feasible? So, back in 2019... I wrote a thing publicly and I said, it's going to hit hundred thousand dollars by 2021. I haven't changed that. I think it's absolutely going to hit that may even go higher than that. And the whole reason is the government and the federal reserve, they're printing all this money and they're forcing people to go find what's called an inflation hedge asset. They're saying, if you hold dollars, you're going to lose. You got to go invest. So real estate, precious metals and yes. Bitcoin are yeah. all going up, stocks going up, et cetera. Got it. At the same time that they force everyone to go find Bitcoin, The Bitcoin that came into the market every day went from 1,800 last year to 900. So it was a 50% drop in the daily incoming supply of Bitcoin. At the same time, everyone wants Bitcoin. So the price exploded, went up 400%. Mm. And so that's only going to continue going into this year. I think $100,000 for sure it hits. The crazy part, though, is the gold market cap is only $10 trillion, right? $10 trillion for all the gold in the world. Bitcoin is a 10x improvement on gold. It is 10 times better from a technology standpoint. But if Bitcoin's market cap only 2x is gold, that's 20 trillion. That puts Bitcoin at about a million dollars a coin. It's not going to be a straight line. We're not going from 40,000 to a million dollars. There's going to be lots of volatility. It's going to go up a lot. It's going to drop 30, 40, 50%. But it's going to hit a million dollars at some point in the future. Got it, Roy. So, so then why did it drop from 20,000 to 5,000 in recent? And is that tied to uh, yeah. election years? It, it's not so much tied to like the political process. The way to think about this is it's a network. So let's say that we all created a mobile app together, right? And we had no users. And then we said, all right, we got to run a marketing campaign to get people to come use our app. And 100 people sign up in that marketing campaign. And they start using the product. And then 30 of them leave. They're like, man, this is whack. I don't want to use the, the mobile app anymore we would have gained 70 new users. We'd have to run another marketing campaign, right? Another 100 people come in, 30 of them leave after some time, we gained another 70. So now we got 140 people. And so every time we run a marketing campaign, it go, we get a bunch of users, some of them leave, but we still have a net higher basis of users. And so we keep doing this over and over again. That's how you build your user base. Same thing with Bitcoin is there was this big kind of bull market, a bunch of people come in, Then some people sell and they leave, but there's still a net gain every time this happens. Mm -hmm. And so when we went from 20,000 and it dropped down to 3,000, that was still higher than the previous high. So basically what you're seeing is you're just constantly getting this kind of network effect growth. And so if you go back, Bitcoin started out, it was pennies. 
And it's now at you know almost forty thousand mm-hmm. dollars, and it's probably going to go up to you know hundred or more, mm-hmm. and then it'll drop again. But when it drops, it's not going to drop back to ten or twenty thousand dollars. Maybe it drops to fifty or sixty thousand mm-hmm. dollars, right? And then it goes and it runs up again, and that's how network effects grow. And so we've seen technology companies do this before. We've just never seen money do this where it's got a like a price uh, you know ticker tied to it on a daily basis. So that's where people see the volatility. I'm sold. I'm done with him. I'm I'm, uh, so, I'm, I'm fine. Are you going to take 100% of your deal in Bitcoin? No. A hundred percent, no. But a large portion of not only now, but future deals. And, and that's why, I, you know, I fuck with people, Pomp, that think outside of the box. And to really grasp this, I guess I have to really think outside of the box. There'll come a time where there'll be deals to be done where all 100% of the deal will go into it and I won't look at it and it'll just be up and down and out. That's a luxury that I will be able to afford. But even this is a privileged conversation between us. A lot of my people, well, not now because you can invest a dollar and get something done. But the mentality pump I'm saying is we always feel like, damn, I'm rubbing two rocks together. I don't have time to even think mm-hmm. about stuff. I don't have money to put to stop. My family don't know about stuff. Where can I learn? Where can I get the info? So I'm really appreciative that you stopped here because last week, like I, the world is changing. The world is changing. And fam, you even going to change with it or be left behind. So I want to know about this stuff. Thank you. I hate the banks too. Yeah. Fuck them. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, this was great. You know what? You know what we say? We say long Bitcoin short the bankers. Mm. I like it. Okay. I like that. This guy, I can see why he's wealthy. I have, I have one, one, one quick, quick, quick question, Pump. Um, I have tax yeah. problems, so naturally I think about the IRS a lot. If I'm one of the stupid people that sell my Bitcoin and make a profit off of it, is that something the government can tax me on? Are you guys that protected, or is this still regulated tax-wise? Great by the question, government? Rory. Great, great question. Yeah. So basically everything that happens in the legacy financial system still applies to Bitcoin. So if you do illegal shit with Bitcoin, you're getting in trouble or going to jail. Like you don't do illegal shit with Bitcoin, right? Two is if you buy Bitcoin, it goes up and you sell it for a profit, you got to pay taxes on the profit. The other thing with Bitcoin is when you spend it, if you if you bought it and it was worth $1,000, and now when you go to spend it, it's worth $1,500, they actually consider that you're selling it and they'll tax you on that $500 gain as well. So there's a almost a penalty, a tax penalty when you spend your Bitcoin. So you shouldn't spend it. Just buy it and hold it for a long period of time and you'll be protected. But like, don't do illegal shit with it and you still got to pay your taxes on it and they can figure it out. So don't try to get around it or be smart because you're just going to get yourself in trouble. Gotcha. All right. I'm clear, dude. Does anyone very, else very have? Very, very informative. Yeah, thank you so much. Man. I, I learned a lot. Yo, Pomp, yeah, I, could t- I could talk to you for hours, man. You just seem like a bevy of information as it pertains to this stuff. The, the only thing that matters is people just got to remember, if you're sitting with 100% of the money you got in cash, you're literally getting screwed. Get invested. It doesn't matter what you invest in. Just get started. Whether it's stocks, bonds, real estate, Bitcoin, it doesn't matter. Just get invested and you'll have a better shot at actually protecting your wealth. So I appreciate you guys giving me the time. This is awesome. Appreciate no, you. Thank you, man. Thank Let you, me hit man. the round appreciate of applause. Yeah. And, uh, and Pop, blink, blink twice if you're the founder. <laughs> are you? Yeah, are you? Are you selling nah, toast? <laughs> hey, Pomp, you thank you, man. <laughs> thank you. We appreciate you, it. Hey, if we need to talk to you again, can we? Can we give you a ring? Yeah, Please. of course. Hey, thank you, Pomp. We appreciate it, man. All right, sounds good, guys. Have a great day. You too, <laughs> Pomp. Hey, I'm going to buy some Bitcoin. God damn it. <laughs> Paul put the battery in my back. Nah, me too. It was Destin. <laughs> that was awesome. That was great. Y'all know Parks only fix the sound for Prime. I got yeah. mad albums fucked up. Yeah, that's not true. You got to be the creator the of Wu Tang to get his attention. Mad albums where the snare is low. <laughs> nah. Yo, that was phenomenal. It was. It really I really was. enjoyed that. Yeah, that very, was, very that informative. Was very informative. I feel stupid, but now I feel enlightened. Well, well, I, I well last week more. we felt we were really stupid, yeah. and was that digestible? Yeah, well, we just like, saw. I yeah, understood. I understood what he was saying. So Bitcoin is basically like buying art and collecting wine and things like that. That's basically That's one, yeah, way, one things, way to look yeah. at it. Yeah. Things that don't devalue yeah. the way yeah. money does. Well, according to him, it might devalue, but who cares? Because it's going up. Right. right. It's to going me, up no to matter me what. it's kind of like in Monopoly when you might get in a jam and you pass all your properties over to your partner to hold just in case. 
Mm-hmm. I see what you did there. That's oh, okay. that's kind of I see what you did. That's there. kind of Bitcoin to me. Yeah. From what he explained, he did a really great, a really fine job of explaining that mm-hmm. to me. I I did mean to ask, ask him about uh, damn, what was that? The silver was telling me about. Oh, the uh, NFT. NFT. Yeah, NFT. yeah silver. Silver said he's gonna shit. come and kick it with us about that. Silver and I have he had three should. combos, yeah. and he's very informed. Silver yeah. should come I in need here. Him to, I need to come here and have him uh, get some photos. How do y'all feel about that I badge? I don't, I, don't, I don't know if y'all could feel feel where I'm trying to take the culture this year, but I'm trying to just do, do represent us a bit differently and really uphold our responsibility with our platform to what good we can do in the, in the world. Like, do y'all, do y'all sense some of that a little bit? Yeah. Or yeah. no? That you're trying I to do. uplift the world? Like I think that financial literacy lesson was really important. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean that was great to me. That was a like I said it, he made it to where you get it, you understand it. Because uh, plenty of people have tried to tell me about Bitcoin before, but the way he broke it down and things he compared it to, so that we can understand it, which is a perfect way of putting it. And and now I totally get it. I understand exactly what Bitcoin is now. I was so ignorant. I really thought cryptocurrency in general was just, all right, this is currency. I can buy shit on the internet and trade shit on the internet only. Right. Yeah, I thought that's, it was that's money. That's what I thought it was. I thought it was thought money, it was money, money Shazam. Basically, yeah. <laughs> money Shazam. <laughs> it it kind of is that? Money Shazam. <laughs> Yo, put your yeah. money over here. Hold, look, hold this song look, over look here. Look what man. happens. Let me tell you what it's doing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, money's here. We're idiots here. Yeah. We're idiots here. But, but that's, that was good. That's but that's why great. we need the, the smart people to come. That was good. Us. Shout out to Pomp, man. Yeah, that was great. He tweeted me the other night and like 500 tech dudes got in my Twitter just talking a language I didn't understand. I was like, all right, we're going to talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah this you, seems important. Yeah, you can explain it to me. <laughs> all right, on to more important news. Maul. Yes. Did I tell you how Rory uh, Farrell put me in a bit of a jam? I don't ever use my full government. No. You didn't tell me that. Rory wouldn't do such a thing. He did. I'd get you out of jams. Rory said that we should interview Drake before his album comes out. And that I needed to be the person to reach out and discuss it. No, but he said he was he would he would come kick with us. Do you believe what superstars say? (laughs) Yeah, why not? He said he wasn't gonna respond to you. Why do you believe what he told me? He said we'd do a song together too. (laughs) What the fuck did that mean? Well you retired. Hey, he said he would do the hook and the bridge. Yeah. I thought I had a hit. You retired. (laughs) I hit Dark Knight. Hey. He he didn't say when. (laughs) That's who you went. (laughs) Why you touch just don't touch me. Stop, man. Don't I didn't say anything. You did say something. I didn't say a one word. Just don't say it again. Okay, I'm sorry. (laughs) <laughs> nah, but you killed the hook. We was out of here, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you thought. <laughs> nah, I think using the you and Amani reference was better than using uh, the Drake. <laughs> uh, settle for a little Tory on Flex, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all. That's all. Yeah. Like, got the While job he was done. beefing with him. Yeah, yeah. Got the job. Don't do that. Got the job. Don't, don't say it was light. Like. It was light. Flex, got the job shit like that. I like I Flex a lot. I like Listen, yeah, actually. So Rory one. told me I need to hit Drake for an interview. I think it makes sense. Because I don't think he's going to do a lot of press, and I think it would make sense for him to do that one press shit with us. My brain said that that was the goofiest, doofiest idea in the universe, and when stars want to talk to you, they'll reach out. But then when I thought that to myself, you know what else I thought of? I thought of you in my head saying, yeah, man, just hit Wayne. Mm -hmm. And I looked at you the same way, like, I'm not hitting a little Wayne. Yeah, hit him. Why not? And I hit Wayne, and he did it. (laughs) Yeah, there you go. Smooth, too. Yeah. Free of charge. Yeah. Close mouth still get fed, Joe. Hey, he didn't even do that A-list celebrity shit they do where they do the verse and then don't clear it for you. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he cleared it. Hey, mm-hmm. even when his team gave me resistance, he hit him. Nah, don't do that. Man, go Wayne. No, yeah. Thank the, you, Wayne. The best is when artists would ask for cash after the verse when they leave and then not clear the record. Mm-hmm. So yeah. It's not even like you got to send the money after. No, you got to pay for clear. my time. Yeah. I got to start shouting niggas out that did me a solid, man. When I brought the Wayne verse to E1, woo! <laughs> 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 Okay, Joe, you come downloaded on. this off YouTube. Come is this on, an unreleased Cor- verse? <laughs> they were like, well, will he do the vid, nigga? I don't know. <laughs> Press this shit up. Yeah. <laughs> we hey, out. Hey, we're talking about green screen. Send that to Flex. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fam, Never yeah. doing a vid for this. Right. Right? That, that's a topic that our listenership won't understand, but that will he do the vid question? <laughs> yeah, that was a big deal. Fam. Yeah, that's major. You know how hard it was to get this feature? Now you want me to ask him for more? Yeah. yeah. To, to come yeah. into a video? Hey, yeah. shout out to Wayne. Wayne was like, I do the vid. I don't want to be around Joe. We was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Hold this great cool. tree, fam. Go wherever you want. <laughs> Go to his house. Now, special hey, shout out to the artists that say, yo, we got to do the vid too. Because that's a big one. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, but there's but, some artists that would be excited to do the video. But that's back to you and Mo, well, not you and Rory believe in artists when they say things. That's just Wait, artists. Who, so, yo, yo, we're going to do the We got to drop the vid for that one. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm talking about the ones that actually do. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's different. I don't care about the ones that say they're going to do it. <laughs> Why well, may Saint do the horse and carriage video? <laughs> he spoke about that on some interview. <laughs> He addressed that. That nigga on Clubhouse just talking away. Why weren't you in the Ask him on Clubhouse. Hey, it wasn't a remix. You ain't do none of the vids. <laughs> Ask him on Clubhouse. No, I'm not doing Why? that. Yeah, right. Why you do that whole shit? No, I'm not doing that. What was you talking about? Oh, I'm shouting out the people that looked out. No, shout out to Wayne. Shout out to Game. Okay. Forgot about. Ooh. Even. Yo, we are such great frenemies. <laughs> you and game? That is my man enemy. <laughs> <laughs> Those are on the radio. Yo, Those yo, are on the radio. Come on, man. No, nah, that's a good one. No, nah, that's nah. my man enemy For, right there. Yeah. That's my main nigga enemy. Yeah. <laughs> when you have enemy, enemies where you just have that understanding, I, you can appreciate that. Yeah, Absolutely. You see him in the supermarket, he ain't gonna throw the fruit at you. Yo, man, come on. I'm, I'm, yeah. nah, we out here. Don't, and then after a certain right age, here. I just kind of look at each other like, man, we're not doing this no more. Like, <laughs> I'm just picturing 45, I'm my nigga. Joe and Game in produce section. <laughs> oh, you shop here too? Bananas everywhere. <laughs> hey, Game was at the peak of his career. Peak, high, hot, fish grease, back away from the stove hot is what I'm saying. Mm. And I, dark, cold, not hot. No budget, no record. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. No label, <laughs> no radio. No, nah, you had mal- no single. Had algorithms. <laughs> no, no, no microphones. Algorithms. <laughs> algorithms. They held you down with the yeah, SMDs. Think about Wait, so I get the <laughs> digital release again. I won't get my flowers. First nigga with the digital release. Whatever. Uh, yeah. And you sold records though, not for nothing. Well, I was the first one to not sell records, and that was clowned when I did 15,000, 16,000 digitally, and then that was the new wave. Everybody is now doing. I think it was 20 something. Whatever it was, yeah. I was clowned. Yeah. And that's what people started doing. Yeah. And, and but, that was when iTunes was giving you more than a penny off what you sold. Yeah. I went to a was trying to chase a label. Wait, maybe I have court papers to say I I went to Algorithms. They, <laughs> <laughs> they were trying to catch a single. They had a big budget for any A-list person. Mm-hmm. I, they said, how about game? I said, don't know if that's going to work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Reached out to game. I don't know if you've heard of DJ Clue mixtape recently. He was cool. <laughs> he hit me and said, yo, I'll get this done for a quick 60. Mm-hmm. I hit algorithms. Mm-hmm. We're going to need 90. <laughs> We're going to need 90 for that yeah, one. Touch that one Duke. a little bit. Yeah. Boy, was I such a con scam ass nigga. No, nah, but you got to get paid for your time. And by the way, this they, is alleged. They paid the 90. <laughs> no, nah, they didn't. Hey, at the time, I was about to lose my girl because I was broke. I brought that 90 home like, ah <laughs> We back. <laughs> hey, um, um, Algorithm paid that 90. I gave, uh, he switched it up on me at the end. He won a 75, I think. Mm. Like that. I only got like 10 or 15 out of it, but boy, was I grateful for that. Yeah, Shout out to Game. Mm-hmm. There's a few more of y'all that looked out a little bit. Yeah. And, and Shout out to 50 for not fucking me up in front of Hot 97 when Web and Nitty made me say all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> all that stuff. All that stuff about oh, that decent hey. man. Hey, all that jazz. <laughs> I didn't believe it. I, I never knew, felt that I, way. No, you was cool. <laughs> it was mad cool, I, man. I looked at Web. Are you sure? <laughs> Listen, but that's why earlier in this pod I said when when you was stupid it's fun to look back in hindsight like yeah. damn what was i thinking back then yeah well, uh, all right so where are we at and let's not gloss over when you catch that 10 or whatever money is relative to you when you're really broke oh, and big. just need when you catch that 10 that you needed 10 when you're broke is but that's well, what I, I was that, saying what's relative to it. Yeah. i'm it thankful fi- i'm thankful to game my rent was 400 at one point i caught a 600 dollar check and Facts. was like <sighs> game had thank no God. word <laughs> Game had no idea. Let me not even lie on him. He might have known how bad I was doing financially. He might have known. Like, that was a lookout from a uh, friend enemy. <laughs> <laughs> like, I paid... Brim. <laughs> I can hear you. You're right there. We know you guys just got this can, fancy can, new apartment. Can, Some of us used to be broke. Yeah, like, I can hear you in there laughing at me. I'm just saying, it was a lookout. I really needed that 15 grand. I couldn't pay rent. Couldn't mm-hmm. pay the car note that was in the girl's name mm-hmm. at the time. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, yeah, it was that's bad. Tr- that's rough. Damn. 
Yeah. One day we'll be bold enough to talk about how it feels in the house when you ain't shit and your girl is. Yeah, you got to walk around the house light footed. Got to keep got tiptoe. Gotta That's keep, her crib. Got to keep, keep offering her something to drink. Are you thirsty? Yeah. <laughs> you want some water? What size? The big one, a little sixteen ounce. Yeah. You you've been on your feet all day. Come here. Come yeah, on, yeah, lay yeah. down. Yeah. Take you a load deserve, off. You, <laughs> <laughs> you went to work and came back. You need a foot rub <laughs> <laughs> every and, night. And during the foot rub, I don't know if you've talked to Con Ed yet. <laughs> oh, man. But I, this is the second notice they've sent me. <laughs> oh man. Good times. When she look at you like that, that's when you got to like kiss the abnormal places. Like you stay at the belly button for a little while. Like just appreciate her. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> kiss the belly button like all life starts yeah. here. This is- <laughs> <laughs> you got to start saying shit like that. Hey, no, that's, that's when you call it a navel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me this just lay on your navel. From. This is where life starts. That's when you got to get to the belly button. And since we all raised by a woman, got a name for a woman. And we- <laughs> got our rent from a woman. Hey, hey, hey. I think we all heal from a woman. Got to be <laughs> Gotta be real pay, for our pay women. Bills for our women. <laughs> 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 Gotta hit your pox wag on the belly button. <laughs> That's, That's some funny shit. That's some funny shit. <laughs> Shout out to everyone that's been broke. All right, what's going? <laughs> you saying was niggas is broke right Nigga, now? Yeah, for real. It's, it's the hard Holy times out shit. there, man. Yo, I called somebody right. Damn, should I share this? I shouldn't share this. So let me see if there's a way I can share this and blank shit out. Remix. I called somebody that works for somebody, a company that I employ, that I've hired, right? And I've recently had to address things. Mm. And in attempting to address things, I was like, ah, I called one of my favorite people over there and I was like, yo, what happens if we actually, I might get this person in trouble. So let me not say this. Let me not say <laughs> You can't come on a podcast and talk about an off the record conversation yeah, you were having. True. I yeah, thought no. you were a revolt. Huh? Nothing. What do you say? Nothing. I, I do revolt. No, you said you were a vault. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, yeah, let, me get, let me get back to being You're a vault. You're not a vault. I'm a vault. <laughs> anyway, anywho, Flex put out a little list recently <laughs> and boy... Stirring the culture. Some of the picks on there, I tell you. Yeah. (laughs) All right, now what else we got? What else we got? What is this that I'm looking at? Uh, What were you gonna get? Oh yeah, something happened to Timbaland. I don't know because I was busy doing real shit, like in in the real world, like with my real friends. Satachiing. Time out right there. You ever say that to somebody you got cool with off the internet? (laughs) Boy, is it smoke. (laughs) Somebody that I'm cool with in real life. (laughs) I'm hanging out with my real friends. (laughs) is that the internet version of when you tell your girl that you've known another girl longer than her? Oh, don't you, ever oh you're trying to kill yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, you're trying to known get her killed. longer than nah, you. Nah, Mistake. Nah, nah, nah. Mistake. <laughs> Abort. Yeah. What does that mean? I don't Abort. know why you tried to pull that off. <laughs> oh, yeah, this, nah. was, this was in my late teens. <laughs> you got to not even off. know other women. You were yeah, a rookie? Yeah. Don't do that. No, because it made logical sense in my head. You never deal with logic with women, bro. I was like, wait, you're getting mad at a girl that I've known for over a decade and I've known you for 10 days? Yes. <laughs> Women are great. <laughs> yes. That's when you go on a date. I bet you've been here with mad bitches. Look, are you having fun? <laughs> yeah. and, and it's your turn. Are you having a good time? Do you like the fries? Or, or How's nah? the salad? How is the salad? <laughs> As a matter of fact, I can give you a bunch of recommendations of what they got. Right. So, <laughs> steak here is great. Have some. The rigatoni is to die for. Yeah, you can't go to a spot and start like, look like you know your way around the spot. Mm. Like, oh, you come here all the time, huh? No, yeah. it has a sign that says bathroom this way. <laughs> I just know where the I can read. Like the bathroom's over here. Or you go to your your main date spot that you bring all the little hussies to. Mm-hmm. You thinking it's safe because you know the waiter. The waiter forgot the faces. He's like, "Hey, uh, little Miss Mama, you having the same thing you had yesterday? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you having the same thing you had last night?" You're like, uh, that, yo, yeah. I've done that as a bartender before. Yo. That yeah, feels bad. What are you and doing? And they actually teach you not to do that. Yeah, no. what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. Why'd you do it? Yeah. It happens. It shouldn't. I know. Yeah. It's part of your job. Hey, well, yeah, some, some guys have a type, you know? Yo, how small of a window did you do that move in? I gave myself an hour one time. I had the hookah spot with a shorty, moved, went home, switched up, went right back to the hookah spot. Yeah, you got to do that. Years ago. What? Like, must have been 20 years ago. Keep showing your toes. Had to be 20 years Keeps ago. Sharp, That's rookie yeah. shit. I've done double headers and not showered in between. Yo, I came back an hour later. That waiter was so confused. <laughs> that waiter was like, I know I just saw you. You know what? 
What are you having? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, where we at? So over the weekend when I was busy with my real friends. Mm-hmm. You tell them. Uh, I saw Twitter killing Timbaland. And this is why I hate y'all. Yeah. What the fuck are you killing Timbaland about? Sampling. Sampling. Yeah. Hold on. Is this one of those times where it's one tweet and then a thousand people talking about that one tweet as if a lot of people are saying that? That's how things yeah. get trending, Roy. Well, no, I'm saying <laughs> when they go, everyone's you killing Timbaland. You just explained Timbaland. it. Mm-mm, no, no. Listen to me. There'll be one tweet and then everyone will talk about how everyone's killing Timbaland. And if you look at it, no, it was just one tweet. And now we're all talking about. There were a few people. There, okay. a few, there were a yeah. few people killing Timbaland. I think There's a lot of times they didn't know he sampled. They didn't know Timbaland sampled. Yeah. They're learning about sampling. Okay. So this and is a whole new generation. Somebody of put a clip together full of samples that Timbaland sampled, and okay. then the kids started talking about Timbaland steals music. And he that was he paid for those. Fuck paid. Who cares? Timbaland has enough money to pay. Yeah. He searched for ages. Yeah. For those yeah. samples. Yeah. Like, there was an art to that. There were people Absolutely. that... Absolutely. Still there, is art to there that. There used to be people, I don't know if that still exists today, that yes. specifically so located there are, samples. Yes, yes right? There are and, and people that sample super obvious shit, I mean, that's not going to say easy, but extremely easier than Timberland digging through the crates with Indian music yeah. that is not popular in America. Right. Mm-hmm. Listen. And creating number one records from it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it just disturbs me when the kids doing a great job. When the kids learn something and then just try to kill somebody for some shit, like, like when they killed the sample, y'all took away jobs. Like y'all took away livelihoods for some people. Killed samples. Samples are still going strong. Very no, they didn't. They they, they tried to. They they, tried. They They tried. You're right. Sampling is so important to music because it gives a livelihood to some people. Like maybe these Indian artists, I don't know how big they are there, mm-hmm. but now they're big everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. it brings life to music that people would have forgotten about or not known about. And receiving royalties from it. Yeah. And, and not to mention it creates some fucking beautiful it? shit. If you I, sample somebody and don't credit them or pay them, I have an issue with that. But other than that, I think sampling is amazing. What's it not it, called? It keeps music alive and profitable Yeah, for artists either, whether them and if they dead their estate and kids yeah, yeah they're gonna eat off big pimping for the rest of their life that's right. fucking amazing yeah. well, am I, maybe I'm wrong but wasn't our culture created another off amazing of sampling sample the break beat yes. and like records and yes. that's what hip hop is the DJ found the break beat and yes the, the break, break beat was the break in the disco part, record right yeah. it's part of our culture it's what we do from hip hop yes but this is obviously a younger audience that just isn't as well informed yeah and it's our all, it's our form, and it's it takes as much time as someone who knows how to play instruments and also digs for samples. It's the same amount of work, right? It is it's the same amount. It. Of, there's an art to it, mm-hmm. and it's time consuming, and mm-hmm. it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's the same. I get the same satisfaction when I come up with a cool guitar line as I do from finding a cool sample because mm-hmm. it took equally as much work, right? And and I hate to tell you, people that hate sampling, the people that are not sampling are listening to other music. To get inspired to do the non-sample. That's the next part. Even <laughs> even to the, tell you, <laughs> even the music that people are sampling, probably borrowed a lick from a record before that, yeah. or a lyric, <laughs> or something. And cre- it was just they didn't have samplers yet. No, no idea is original. Correct. I totally skipped by the funny part and why I mentioned Rory telling me that we needed to interview the boy. Oh, oh, oh uh, okay. about how you approached it, because I did not say that. What do you think I did when Rory said, yo, you need to reach out and see if we can get an interview with the boy? I think he reached out. You reached out? Yeah, so what's his issue? What's your deal? I am a vault, so I'm not going to tell our see, but millions I'm not of listeners I'll tell. I'm not ashamed of it. it. I did it. Like I'm, I'm self-aware. I'm confident. There's nothing wrong. I'm a straight man. I don't care what his alien bank says. You reached out. <laughs> well, it's not that year yet. Yes. Yeah, it's true. Mm-hmm. I sent the eyes. Okay, yeah, you got eleven months left. Which eyes? Yeah, no, the eyes, the eyes emoji. There's more eyes, not just the eyeballs. Why? You sent that to a man. <laughs> the boy. <laughs> <laughs> Get him a booth. <laughs> I shouldn't. Have? No, you should. What I should have said? Hello, hi, <laughs> hi, hey, Aubrey. Hey, what's up, man? How you been? How's the family? Happy New Year. Health and blessings, prosperity. Yo, you want to do this interview? How's your ACL? Yeah. See, I feel like that's so see-through. 
The eyes is just like the eyes is what's good. Fucking creepy. You trying to see me? No, no, but you shouldn't be trying to see. <laughs> Wait, what? You shouldn't be trying to see Drake. You're upsetting Basley. <laughs> oh, Rory was trying to see Drake. Oh, that, I sent okay. the eyes for Rory. Oh, you setting Rory up? Oh. No, I wasn't thinking about it. Wait, oh, Joe okay. said my man want to talk to you. <laughs> 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 my man trying to holler. <laughs> Listen, I assumed when he said, yo, I got an interview for y'all before the album dropped that it was a lie. I didn't I didn't believe it. Especially no. when him and Rory started going at it at the pool party. I was like, oh, it's over. Nah, man. <laughs> I did it the interview. Especially when he didn't send us a candle. That's true. He, he sent them to women. Yeah, he sent them to women. He didn't send us any, but that's okay. It's just it's candles. I know how you feel about candles, but it's okay. It's okay. But yeah, he said he would do it. I'll take him as a guy of his word. Said he would do it. When but he if, if he do it, I mean, the eyes got it done. No, the eyes didn't get it done. He said he would do it before the eyes. Think so? No, yeah. That, you don't think it was? No, it wasn't the eyes. Pop Smoke. If he doesn't do it, makes it because his. Of the eyes. <laughs> you might have just ruined. <laughs> you ain't hit him. I, you was at the pool party chilling. No, I didn't know it was. It was. It was interview time. I'm mean, not that I want to even yeah. interview Drake. I just want to talk shit with him. But yeah, I mean, I'll hit him. I'll reach out. I think we would fail that interview. Fail. Because we, we would just be sitting there having a blast. Yeah, that's what it's supposed we to be. I, I don't want to interview him. I think, I think Elliot and B-Dot killed the journalism they the real, part. They did the real part. We got yeah, that. I don't want to interview him. Let's go fucking laugh. Yeah, yeah. I want to laugh at Drake. Niggas Talk don't want to laugh with us. Talk shit, laugh, you know, crack jokes. All right, let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's see what the eyes does. Uh, Pop Smoke <laughs> makes his ass. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> yeah, you should have thought that one through. Give me a few of the uh, Satoshis. <laughs> Yo, give me them Satoshis. Yeah, let me get a couple. Just a couple of Satoshis back, man. Ma- Pops- Maul said that you got all of us $5. I'm not listening to Maul. <laughs> and maybe I did. I don't know. That's what it is. That's <laughs> a, but, I don't but, know. It, but it makes sense. I just sense told you I don't he know. he just said how, how, how um, Pomp just broke it down, yeah. They, that but he's saying that shit going to Yeah. Yeah. The, the important part in that is if it is $5, one day it could be 100 10 Absolutely. That's That's the important part. I know you was joking about my bar mitzvah Damn, sh- before. Give me my first. <laughs> Give me. You can't do nothing good for this podcast. <laughs> That's probably to God. They, for my first communion, like all my uncles gave me, I forgot what those things are called. That the, over time, uh, the bonds or whatever, the yeah, bonds, yeah. yeah. Oh, the so, cracker. That's racist. Um, not, they give you a cracker. <laughs> the body of Christ. The cracker, no one. They well, it, it depends. That it's a, a it's blessed. That is a curse. It's a, bl- it's a blessed treat. What's the cracker? Blessed it's a treat. <laughs> it's, a styrofoam. Blessed it's a styrofoam chip. Don't yeah, worry it's about a good cracker. That has a little Section 8 chip. <laughs> but That's I, a chip. My grandma had 10,000 of those in the cupboard. It's just got a weird <laughs> texture. They are styrofoam It's you just hear- something weird about just a man putting a cracker in your mouth. <laughs> This is something weird about that. I'm sorry. I just thought about that. Like, you Mo, Mo, you've been one. wearing a Jesus piece for this entire podcast. You get one. You have, you have a fed it a girl. Take some blood. You, <laughs> your chain is the body of Christ. Wait, did you ever feed a girl? And if so, how did you fly the fork? It's terrible. You asked me this when we was out eating with two girls. You don't remember that? No. What happened? <laughs> you an idiot, man. Tell me. We're talking about it off air. No, tell me. You asked me if we was out. 20 eating. years ago, I'm we sure. Ha- yeah, 20, 25 years <laughs> exactly. ago. Exactly. We, ha- we was having lunch with, uh, with, with two, two lady friends. Were they cute? Did yeah. I have a joint there, or was this like a casual thing? No, this was the woman you were seeing at the time. All right, well, how, who was shorty to and you? this was her Who friend. was shorty? No, was, well, this nobody, was right? My homegirl. <laughs> <girl. laughs> yeah, I hate his story. No, this girl. was the woman you were seeing, yeah. and this was a friend of mine. Oh, yeah, I got, all right. He's been consistent right, for 25 right. years. Hey, girl, get your shit off. This was my homegirl. So you <laughs> asked me, you was like, yo, because she had said something about the food on my plate. <laughs> So Joe was, like, yo, Joe was like, go ahead, let, let her taste some. You know what I mean? Like, feed her. I said, Joe, I'm not about to feed this woman, man. Joe was like, yo, go ahead, make the airplane. <laughs> yo, you know you hit him with the open <laughs> up. <laughs> that's, that's, that's for children. <laughs> it's grown that's women for, sitting right here. Joe was like, yeah, no, just make the airplane noise. Feed it. I was like, All right, no, so you put that. the fork right to her mouth, grab her chin a little bit. No, <laughs> no. Just gave him my plate. I was like, so, yeah, have some. Just pass the whole plate? That's yeah. small. Huh? Because you don't know exactly how much she might like it. She might want to keep it. I mean, go ahead. There's much more where that came from. We can, we can order another one. When Buster Rhymes put out past the Cavarsier, did you pass it? Uh, no, I, I wasn't a Cavarsier guy. <laughs> I was an ENJ guy in that era. Yeah, I just wasn't a Cavarsier guy. Look how fast I killed nah, no, nah, I you. No, you didn't I know you and Biggs was in the club <laughs> passing around Cavarsier. Not Cavarsier. No? No. All right, just checking. 
Mm-hmm. All right. Bond smoke. Oh, and I never finished my Bond story of how I thought as a kid when I got all these Bonds, I was going to be rich at 18 and 18 hit and I had $50. Yeah. <laughs> I did the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I was, but that's cool. I was like, ooh, I'm good when I get to school. I, I have got, mad yeah. bread. I got yeah. that communion uh, yeah, 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 Bond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My mom took them shits out of her drawer that had been sitting there for 15 years. Yeah. Said, mm-hmm. yeah, come on, mom. Hand that shit over. Yeah. Right. Went right down to the bank. <laughs> Here's 50 bucks, sir. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, that's all of them? Yeah, all of them. <laughs> yeah. I, I made that mistake once. Bond. <laughs> Fuck out. It's like, I'll cash this thing in. I'll be straight for a little while. No. <laughs> nope. <laughs> that, was, that was 200 bucks. <laughs> I mean, it got me through, though. I don't. I want to shit on Bonds. I want to shit on my uncles. Because that was, what, 25 cents you put on that shit? <laughs> I want to shit the on What the fuck did you do for my communion? That's sick. It was like a big sacrament of my life. <laughs> That's sick. What the fuck is wrong they with put y'all? put a nickel on your shit. <laughs> man, I got something for the little lad. Come on, man. <laughs> put that in there. The fuck? <laughs> that was a lot of years, though, man. That was That was bullshit. You up, up now, though. Like... I got the Takashis. You up and you up and you stuck. You up and you stuck up there. It's not. St- he's not stuck up there. He's sitting right here. On he's couch. grounded. I'm sitting right on a couch. All right. <laughs> Never mind. He's okay. Stuck up there. Pop smoke. Roy ain't been up in a while, right? <laughs> he's been down, down. I've actually been doing a hype. Yeah. Okay, talk your shit. Bounce mm. back. There you what go. Happened? What I happened? Thought, <laughs> I thought it was turmoil what and mess. <laughs> what happened to you this weekend? I was back. Show off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no. You know that's how niggas talk when they get the fresh shape up. Yo, I said to somebody, yo, man, on the chatty house, what you think about a little verses between Big Sean and Wale? And they was like, ah! ah, ah. <laughs> they laughed you out the room? Yeah. Why? Wait, on, who's, on whose behalf? I'm pretty sure they laughed him out on behalf of Big Sean. They didn't. As I was going to say they, they told me that why would that even be a competition for Big Sean? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, they don't think that Wale is any competition for him. Wale uh, is, is doing numbers in a versus. Yeah. That's a tough opponent. That's not what we're saying. Versus Big Sean, how does it look? How many, I think how Wale should have enough that's records. That's a good matchup. Wale has enough records. Big Sean wins in the feature game. so that, That's the thing that might separate him. Yeah. Is the big features. No hands is a point. Check that. Yeah. Dice yeah there's a lot a of there's a lot of wild. Lotus, Lotus flower bomb <laughs> might be a point. Yeah. It might be. The joint with Usher is a the point. Ju- matrimony. The Usher joint. That's yeah. a point. Is a point. I don't know what Sean gonna follow that with, but that's a point. Wale got some shit. Maybe twenty is the distance between Sean. He had a couple hits on that first album. But Sean had. Oh, so that would kind of be like uh, uh, Kanye's Kanye's camp. What's the name of his camp? Good music. Good music but, but versus Wale, uh, MMG. <laughs> no, but even Wale would. Features. I'm not saying it's on the same as Sean with like the Kanye and Hove shit, but he's got some Rick Ross features, some MMG features, some Meek features that he can keep up in the feature game as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. Wale is a quality opponent. He's, he's quietly, uh, he's got a lot of joints. From his class, he, he has somebody maybe just made it. radio hits and those type of joints. Somebody just made it cool to not, not like Wale and people ran with it. Yeah. I don't know why. Well, while he complains on the internet, he was just joking about that, I think, today or yesterday okay, or something. Yeah. That'll do it. Yeah. Y'all want to talk about, um, let's talk about the Nets. Talk about it. Try it. I'm on the bandwagon. Already? <laughs> Even know. without seeing Kyrie in the I don't know what I said last week. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you still think the uh, the Knicks gonna catch the uh, the Nets gonna catch the Knicks? Actually, hold up, man. <laughs> hold up, let me get in our. I I don't know. I mean, get in our new segment. Worst take. <laughs> <laughs> hey, all right, Mo, you ready? <laughs> me and you, huh? Max, what's up? <laughs> the Joe One Network presents worst take. <laughs> worst take. Hey, hey. Am I Molly? Is that Wally? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look, and Wale comes on. That's a point. <laughs> that's a record? That's a point. It could be. Come on, Molly. <laughs> so, <laughs> guys. Introduce us, Parksy. Uh, How's Jalen? <laughs> he's well. He's <laughs> Look at Parks. Hey, Molly be home soaking up that Jalen talk, and she be bringing the smoke to Stephen. Stephen, hey, wait. Wait, hold up. Let's talk. You don't believe. Well, yo, Molly, Molly you you're supposed relax. to be moderating here. Yeah, yeah, you better chill out, Molly. All right, so listen. I don't know what I said last week. 
What did you say? I don't think you said nothing crazy. Did Whatever you? I said, it was wrong. I forgot that James Harden can pass. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I forgot he could pass. I forgot he's the man. I forgot that I've seen this on the Thunder. It's the three of them there, Jeff Green, Durant, and Harden. And if you're subbing out Westbrook for uh, Kyrie, whenever he gets back, I don't care that they don't have a bench. He's I back tonight. Wait, I don't care that they – tonight? Yeah. Oh, we out of here. Why are we still potting? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't care that they can't stop a wet paper bag from scoring. They can't stop anything. And guess what? I'm watching every one of these games. This is beautiful. Yeah. This is amazing. Jersey's reminding me. I was going to say, please keep Derek the Derek Coleman, back. Kenny Anderson. Thank God Steve Nash is not out there calling plays. <laughs> Thank God that he is not doing that. Yeah. But they look sick. Yeah, they look good. Uh, yeah. I'm penciling them in as going to the finals now. I don't care about what Greek Freak is doing. Yo, who knew that Kevin Durant hated Greek Freak? Look how I started narrative. <laughs> That's I didn't know that. Well, I only pushed him nine times in that game the other night. And he also was scoring with such a vigor that it was like, oh, all right, you got something against this guy. <laughs> KD really don't fuck with a lot of dudes in the league, though. He won't say it publicly, but he really doesn't. He don't fuck with a lot of these dudes. But I like that. I like that. I like the fact that you keep it like, you know, we just play against each other, but I don't really fuck with y'all like that. What do you think about some of the women who say uh, James Harden lost uh, 48 pounds in 46 hours? <laughs> Like, he did look in shape. It was like, damn, I, I see why. Yeah. Did, yeah. Did, did the wrestling diet? Huh? Did the wrestling diet? Whatever he did, it works. He's happy now. They tried to block him off one game from getting to the top of the key and lead him into the defender on the baseline. He he did. He stepped back, like, all the way to the baseline and shot a three in an mm-hmm. awkward motion. It was like, yo, why are we not just fast-forwarding to the finals? <laughs> <laughs> you should not be able to do that. Yeah. So they look they look great, and I'm all the way in. I got to rush home to see how Kyrie looks with uh with James. That's it. Yeah. yeah. That's it. That's 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 my yeah. They look good, man. That's my worst. They take. still they still not uh they're a small team. They don't have a lot of bigs. I think that might hurt in playoffs or might affect them a little bit. But when you have three guys that can score the way uh, James, KD, and Kyrie can, I mean that kind of it gives you a little bit of a cushion. Yeah. But, well, um, when I mean when you trade away all your bigs, right? Yeah. Yeah. You see Obi back, hey. Yeah, happy he's back too. No, I like Obi. I like him. Yeah, he's back. That's all I'm saying. Anything else in sports that we need to mention? We got we got football, uh, football, football football this weekend. Uh, Well, quickly, I don't know if I said it off mic before or on mic. I am a loyal Knicks fan. When you guys do see me rooting for the Nets, you can call me bandwagon. No, I mean I think you just like the fact that it's it's just fun basketball to watch, and it's in New York. Yeah, yeah, I think that's all it is. Julia yeah, still, ki- Julia still killing Joe. You know what I'm saying you ain't talk about that. You yeah. ain't, you ain't talk about that. He's still, he still cooking. Come on, leave me alone. Nah, because you try to, you leave know what I mean. He's like, yo, you had some things to say about him. He's still killing for y'all. Look, no, he is. He is he's killing. They look Playing good. Really I love well. quickly. I love yeah, quickly. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's special. He's crazy. He's as soon as he goes to the bench, tank season. <laughs> <laughs> them, niggas, them niggas can't score a lick when quickly goes to the bench. Uh, but I don't have. Joe I don't been saying have, that for two decades. Not we should tank this year. What's your NFL picks, Joe? Uh, unlike you, I don't think the the. I think the Bucks have a shot. I think the Bucks have a shot. Say it. I think they're gonna win it all, Mike. No, huh? I think they're gonna win it all. Shot. I just Aaron Rodgers is fucking balling, and it's in Green Bay. The winner of the Super Bowl is. Playing the other game, it's Buffalo or it's Kansas City. It's no. one of I think, them. I think Buffalo's going to win. Buffalo's ready. I think Buffalo's going to win. Can, but they I think can, Green they can beat the... Kansas City. They can beat Green Bay. They can beat uh, the Bucks. Bucks. They can beat them all. I would like to. see I'm the not Bills mad win, at the man. Bucks. And if I'm Griselda, I'm really rooting for that. I don't understand. I don't they understand are. how they... They made yeah. a whole song. Yeah, they were at the game. <laughs> they're they like doing the, a bunch of shit. They're like the ambassadors. Yeah. Do we need to spend any time on whatever the tweet was? That Griselda said, and nah. Any, no, no, nah, I'm, I'm gonna uh, try to get calm. Yeah, let's here. find out. Let's not irresponsibly use our platform. Let's see what's going on before we report on that. Yeah. Did I talk about Pop Smoke making his acting debut in the upcoming film Boogie? Get into it. Pop Smoke is making his acting debut <laughs> in the upcoming film Boogie. Well, that's great. Uh, boogie, 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 boogie about Chinese American basketball player. This is an ad. I'm not reading the ad, but I will see. Uh, I will check this because yeah, I thought Pop Smoke uh, had a real bright future ahead of him. So shout out yeah. to him, rest in peace. Yeah. Uh, and this is awesome. Oh, Look. so this is Jeremy Lin's uh, story. Lin Sanity. Oh, oh, is it really? No, I'm just. Oh. It's uh, a Chinese American basketball player. Well, don't player. do that again. Alfred Boogie oh, Chan. I'm just studying I, and working on becoming a 
professional basketball player. Maul, Sorry for believing you instead of thinking you were racist. Maul, what you doing tomorrow? You, <laughs> what you doing? You, I actually genuinely was like, oh, wow, this, I, this would be a really good story. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's just a racist fuck. No, he's a, he's a <laughs> proud boy. The gentleman, the gentleman looks like a guard. He's a guard. Look, now it's the gentleman. Jer- Jeremy Lin is a guard. <laughs> if he was a big guy, if he, hey, if he was a big guy. gentleman. Man, no, we got it. We got it. No, we know what he's trying to say. Jeremy Lin is Chinese. He's American. Was Antifa. He's, he's Antifa. <laughs> He's Antifa. All the Chinese is Antifa. <laughs> no, he's a Chinese American. I'm Jeremy Lin, okay. I know you have a problem with China. <laughs> China. <laughs> Mo, what you doing tomorrow, man? You going to sabotage the inauguration? Nah, man. What you mean? Chill out. I'm coming Why to your crib. I'm going to come right there. Keep nah, it up, man. Make, make sure you're straight. I'm just mad. You know, Trump is, he's gone, man. I don't have no more jokes, man. I can't look at CNN and laugh. Uh, you know, this was a good four years of laugh. If you think any of this is going away because he's out of office... I just want y'all you to come in here and talk about uh, Sleepy Joe. And I'm wide awake now. When, when he start, when he start doing his shit. Yeah. I mean, nah. Joe goes to bed pretty early. Nah, I'm I up, would... man. I'm up. Took I'm a little not, nap early. No, no, I'm good. No, not Biden. Yeah, not man. Biden. So Lady Gaga <laughs> said to really kill shit this year somewhere. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> at the inauguration. And Jennifer Lopez set to perform at Biden's inauguration. Good for them. Good for them. I don't know if I'm tuning into the <laughs> the inauguration pre show. Y'all want to talk about that? No. Is Steve Harvey going to be there breaking the Lego ball? Oh, that was Gronk that Gronk. broke the Lego ball. Yeah. Broke Harvey's, yeah. Harvey's <laughs> he Lego was, face. He was mad about this shit, bro. There he was. Um, That's a sick shape. Snoop Dogg helps Death Row Records founder <laughs> Harry O receive presidential pardon. Well, Harry O. Harris, 58, has been fighting it out of prison for years. Recently, there's been relentless push for his release after contracting COVID-19. Also been stricken with the ailment called... Gullian Barr syndrome that attacks the immune system and nerves. Harris has been jailed over 30 years after he was convicted of trafficking cocaine and attempted murder. We ain't a lot about who Trump is allegedly supposed to pardon. Kodak Black, Lil Wayne, uh, well, Harry O, all of his white scammer see, buddies. See, and y'all called him and y'all called him racist. See? Yeah. Yeah, I still think he's racist. <laughs> Listen, See? man, we got some really interesting sleepers <laughs> for y'all this week. Man, Free these, Harry o, these they sleepers call go... Man. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, so so it was a million people telling me that I, I needed to watch the uh, Tiger Woods doc on HBO Max, right? Uh-huh. Um, Told you guys that and got laughed out of the room. Oh, that's what happened? <laughs> but I, had, I, I wrote down over the weekend because I, cont- I kept seeing the commercials for the, tra- uh, the trailer. Mm-hmm. The trailer for the, for the doc. Mm-hmm. And they kept showing me golf. So I wrote down... Tiger Woods' doc should not have led with golf. That was what I was coming in here to discuss with y'all. Okay. I feel like we just needed to see a lot more of the mess, hear a lot, a lot more thoughts from the people that were there involved, that watched them, so forth and so on. Oh. Uh-huh. And I talked to some people that watched it, and they said, fam, that's exactly what this is. Oh. Uh-huh. This is not golf time. It's not a golf doc. Everybody's there. And I said, what do you mean, Everybody. They said his girlfriend from high school was there. I said, okay, that's pretty cool. They said, no. And she has the note that Tiger wrote her to say, hey, I'm never speaking to you again. Mm-hmm. So when I watched it, she had the note. Mm-hmm. It was signed, love Tiger. <laughs> How do well, we know he wrote that? By the See, way, we, uh, uh, we don't, we yeah, don't. Yeah. But that's what I wanted to talk to y'all about. Well, he ended all his, I don't, his voicemails with, hey, it's Tiger. <laughs> well, that part too. That was really him. Yeah, but, but listen to this. I, I'm with you, Maul. I don't know that he wrote that letter to Shorty. Mm-hmm. And at least in part one of this doc, I won't get too in detail about it because I want to give you all the chance to watch it so mm. we can talk about it. It's, it's really I watched wait, it wait, good. Wait, part wait, one. It's it was really amazing. good, and Do this is not bad. Do they talk to Tiger at all? I have not seen him I don't speak like to docs Tiger like just yet. I don't like docs like that. Talk to the guy you're making a documentary about. Let's hear his side. Yeah, let, let him defend Because all these people that y'all got but here talking, that, and but what he do you may mean not defend have spoken to was, some of these people in 30 It was nothing but years. them showing his greatness, his rise, fall, and rise again. So, I mean... For me, I never, I don't need to hear you speak to Tiger, but I asked that last week. Remember, I was like, yo, who owns this? It, does he co-sign this? But when I watched it, or when I watched some of it, they had so many people that had everything to do with Tiger. I enjoyed hearing their perspective. They had his caddy. They had his girl. They had this person. They had this. They really got in depth with his mom and his dad. And that's where I wanted to take this conversation with y'all. Because 
He was a, gol- a golf phenom at two years old. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like, they showed how his dad was a stage dad. And when we think about the term stage parents or stage dad or mom as it, as it relates to white people, when you see them put their two-year-old daughter in ballet or something early, it'd be real sick shit to me. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, damn, that's, that's fucked up. I mean, we've seen a story before with some of the greats. Like, Michael Jackson was robbed of a childhood. Like, some of the people were just robbed of a childhood. Uh-huh. And when we watched this with Tiger, that's what it was. Mm-hmm. And there's a beauty in that. And it's also very odd to watch. So without y'all watching it and without us talking about the doc, where do y'all stand on stage parents? Like inserting your kid to be a great at something before your kid knows anything about the universe. Is it art? Is it pressure? Is it good? Is it bad? The doc starts with the dad saying, I made this child, or he didn't even say this child, he said it. No, they even mentioned when he went into I, Nike after signing, they were trying to do the cons- like consulting, media training shit. He uh-huh. was like, no, I already did this. I've him. been training him to be this for his whole life. What the fuck are y'all talking about? They just got into, hey, I made this child to be the greatest golfer ever. And then they just show you how it was done. And because I was alive for it, uh-huh. I wasn't in a rush to go see it. Like I was in high school. I think Tiger and I are the same age. That's why I, I started to watch it last night, but I kind of turned it off because I'm like, for us that kind of grew up with this, we saw so much Tiger shit. Deservedly so. He's one of the best athletes that we've ever seen. But mm-hmm. we were bombarded with Tiger docs for 20 years. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? On SportsCenter and ESPN and everywhere in the world. So I wasn't rushing to see this. But if it's worth watching, I'll check it out. He was, he was probably it the big, biggest athlete of, of my era watching sports as a kid. Makes sense. No, he was. Yeah. 1,000%. And he's, yeah, four, he's 45. Watch this. He's, he's five years old. I just like the documentaries that, like how they did Jordan's Last Dance. They, <laughs> they bring the iPad and they show you something that they interviewed somebody and they get, give Mike a chance to respond to that. Mm-hmm. I just th- I just like docs like that. Like, I wish they would have did that. I like that too. Like, show me what people that you've re- uh, interviewed from my doc are saying about me and then give me a chance to, I don't have to be in the same room with them. Give right. me a chance to respond to that. None right. of you answered the, the stage parents question, oh. and I'd like an answer from you. Um, I'm not mad at it if it's Is it as long beautiful as it's or is it a too, real ugly thing? As long it's as ugly. it's not too obsessive. Like, yeah. if it looks like your kid is genuinely isn't the, just... Isn't the entire idea based around an obsession? No. Yes, it's, by, it's, by, all right, by the way, why I think okay. it's ugly is because... Let's look at the percentage. It is, it is based there's around an obsession. A, there's a lot... This happens very often. And let's look at the percentage of the Tigers, the Michael Jacksons... Uh, the Williams sisters, it's not a high percentage of what they become compared to the amount of stage parents that there are in the world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it fucks kids up, and they're not all going to become Tiger Woods. Right. So, it, yes, it's it ugly. fucked Tiger Woods up. Yeah. That's what they said in the first episode. It like, yo, they prepared, they prepared him to be the greatest golfer in the world. They just didn't prep him for fame. Humanity. And life. Yeah. And what it would do. Like, Let's save this. Let's table this. I want y'all to watch it so we can really have an in-depth conversation about it because, boy, is it great. Uh, Netflix announced that they putting out they put out their entire slate of movies. They said they got a new movie coming out every week for the rest of the year. How do y'all feel about it? Like it? Yay? Nay? I yeah, like it. Sure. I like yeah. it. Yeah, you better do some. HBO's on your ass. Facts. Well, HBO's on your ass. New Denzel movie coming out. End of the month is another movie coming out. I saw four movies that dropped that I need to go see. The Make one sure night, you see uh, One, one Night in Miami. The One Night in Miami Make shit. Sure you I need to go that? see. One Night Miami. One Night, Prime. One night Miami. Prime. Prime. Amazon, Prime video, yeah. Amazon Prime. Uh, make sure you go watch American Skin. American Skin. Yeah. What's that about? I hear that's really good. It's about uh, a boy getting shot by a cop. And... And oh, taking taking the law in his own hands. That's Nate what the Park, little paragraph Nate said. But I brought that up on here, but I thought it was an older movie. But maybe it's like the movie that we were talking about the other day, yes. where it was Syn- never released. Syncrosity. Yeah, that was never released. Or synchronized, whatever the name is. Yeah. Oh, but these movies him. were slated to be released in 2019 or Got whatever, it. and because movies died, they're being released now this way. So I know we almost had three hours, but Your Honor. Oh, it happened. Yeah, it, it happened. did happen. I fell asleep on it, so please do not tell me. <laughs> okay. Um, it was. One of the duller episodes, but I think it's setting up for oh, the shit. It's story. one of those swing episodes. They're yeah. supposed they to swing you to the next one. Yeah. 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 So Well, once they get swinging, you know this is about to end soon, so they're going to get to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it's, it's about seven. to get to the shits once this trial begins. <laughs> yeah. I didn't think it was a dull episode at all, actually. No, as I, far I, as I actual, like, like episodes actions. where they build story. And I didn't yeah. say it was a bad yeah. episode. It was just action-wise from what everything's been. It's a, it's a setup episode. It's, it's yeah. set up for, for the next one. That's what it is. 
the really? series to be crazy. I think I'm gonna watch American Skin tonight. Boy, it would be better if I had a young lady to watch it with, but whatever. American shoot shoot your shot, bro. Come on. At who? I don't know. You should actually watch this with Trey. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. My kid is too hot out here to want to watch movies with me. <laughs> nah, you can't. Like, imagine that. being 20 years old and want to watch a movie with you. Gotta, you gotta make that a thing, man. You gotta make that a thing. And important movies. You know, All right. You know, this story is important. Black, black father, black son. It's important. Yeah, no. I'm going to check this out, and that's not a bad idea. Mm-hmm. I'll call him and ask him. He'll say no, but I will ask him. <laughs> uh, that's all I have for TV. Uh, hopefully you're happy we didn't give you your honor spoiler. We're trying. We're trying to be better out here, man. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think there's anything else, any music dropping Friday that we need to know about? It's a good question. Uh, so Friday we got the Tiger Doctor to talk about. Oh, the Pharaoh album that I've produced is coming out Friday. Let's get a round of okay. applause. Yeah. Come on, look at shot. Something else is coming out Friday. That's all I want to know. <laughs> 13. <laughs> magnificent. Uh, this is a- okay. January 21st. Yeah, I don't, I don't um, think I don't, there's any releases that I saw. No music releases uh, that I saw. Again, I want to shout out uh, Ming Lee, Karen Civil, our Girl I Guess podcast, dropping tomorrow on the Joe Budden Network. Uh, video and audio dropping the same day. Shout out to Bridget, Olivia, and Mandy. Uh, See the Thing Is podcast each and every Tuesday morning. Y'all know the vibes, man. What is this that I'm reading here? Charlie Puth tweeted and deleted that Drake's new album, Certified Lover Boy, will drop Thursday, January 21st. Yo, I wish they shut the fuck up. That was the original date. I was going to say, right. didn't he say that in a trailer? They said that. Yo, third week of January, we live. Why anybody keep acting like they got news? Uh, you wasn't in the Bahamas, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're mad at Charlie. <laughs> You, you ain't send Drake the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't try to eye the boys. I'm going to find a song. Mic check, mic check, mic check. The vibes continue this episode, gentlemen. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all. I know I did that earlier, but I want to do it again because y'all are dope. Really enjoyed these last few pods where we can all get educated together on a few things. Really enjoyed us using our respon- uh, using our platform responsibly, being dot connectors. You know what I mean, we connecting dots out here, Rory. Listen, man, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm just a, a mere mortal to you, influencers. Come on, man, you could be a micro. You a micro? micro? No, you a micro? I see your shit on a micro level. I am not a micro. <laughs> you gotta put an MI in your bio. Yeah, man. yeah, man. Get your like, satoshi. Like do it right up. now, though. Like take your phone out and do it in your bio right now. If you guys think I'm a micro influencer. Never mind. Forget it. You. You know. No, I'm a major influencer. Talk. Am I? Same shit. <laughs> Minor, major. Listen, man, I'm the greatest, man. I said that before I knew I was. Go, go use my fashion over code, man. Come on. I said that before I knew I was. Ooh. But why are you pressing him to go use it? Yo, go use my code, man. <laughs> Do a little sauce on the. Yeah, go use my code right now. Go buy something. You know, Rory get that 5% when you use his code, like the OnlyFans girls. Mm. Yeah. Just go to my OnlyFans, too. One day we'll talk about the OnlyFans girls robbing each other, talking about use my code. No, bitch, I'm not giving you 10% of my earnings. <laughs> no, one, one day we'll talk about the functionality of the OnlyFans app and where they're dropping the ball, but that's another thing. Have you pinpointed where they're dropping the ball? The functionality uh, of not having an app and having to go to a website that lags and always has errors all the time. You, they paid you for that? I'm for confused that free, about that. Oh, see, see, I'm a little confused. That, that line confuses me because the app, the app store stuff, like, I could see a company, especially one that has porn shit on their shit, not wanting to have an app store, not wanting to cut the app store in on their 30%. They might not be able to. Yeah, because of the porn stuff. Yeah. But okay, I well can't see use, why they would want to anyway. Well, then use... I'm not cutting your, you your in web, on 30% of shit. That's what all of, shit. That's what all the Fortnite dudes and everybody else was mad at. Why, why would I do that for my OnlyFans? If I have all the girls, fuck you. Hmm. Huh? Then figure yeah. out how to make your web only fans shit work. fucking fashion over facet. If I got the girls, fuck you. Sorry. Oh, shout Split out to on. Kyrie, man. Plenty shout out to shout out Kyrie stuff. Irving. Uh, bought a house for the family of George Floyd. Uh, that's what Stephen Jackson is reporting. Shout out to uh, Matt Barnes and Stephen Jackson. Every other podcaster out there. Shout and rest to Kyrie, in, man. That was a and rest in peace man. to George yeah, Floyd. Been. Really honorable move by Kyrie. I appreciate him. I can't wait to see him tonight. Yeah, and everybody stop stop saying Kyrie should retire and he's not focused on basketball. Ask about his mental health. How about that? Kyrie's mental health is all right. Oh, uh, we hope so. We don't know. I haven't spoken yeah. to him. 
That boy is no fool. Listen, man, we getting out of here, man. I hope y'all really enjoyed this podcast. Keep us in your prayers. Lord knows we need to be there. Until the next time, I bid you adieu. Farewell. Hasta la vista. Adios. So long. Goodbye. Riva Derchi. 100. All that good stuff. Your Uber's outside. Uber pool. Hit me when you get home. Uh, remember, life is a series of moments and moments pass. So let's make this one last as if it's all that we have. Before we get out of here, to the fellas out there, please remember that the baddies are insecure. The stagnant women want to travel and the closed-minded women want you to teach them things. Enjoy your headache, please. Get you a Tylenol. <laughs> Big one. With that said, we are gone, man. What y'all got going on for the week? Anything interesting? Anything fun? No, I'm keeping it light, man. 2021 is still cooking. Yeah. Head down to the finish line. Let's look up around June, July, August and see what the work looks like. And we out of here, man. Let's vibe out. Happy Wednesday. Enjoy yourself out there. Single lady. <laughs> How you have no one to watch your honor with? I, just, uh, I don't know. Fat Man Scoop, <laughs> Crunklin Clan, Fat Man Scoop, Crunklin Clan, Crook Got Fight. <laughs> Crooklyn Clan. It's okay. I was just in a room with Fat Man Scoop on that app. Oh, nice. <laughs> and I was like, this is kind of cool. Hey. No, it was cool. Yeah. And Fat Man School was giving it up. I'm sure. I appreciated that. <laughs> <laughs>